All right, my friends. Welcome in. Need some good hype on a Monday. Need need proper hype to get us started out on a Monday. Welcome in, folks. We are doing it. Whoo! Just chatting again today. I of course just had a nice run through the house. Uh Tommy was having her daily squabble. Let me go tell her. Hey, we're going live, girly. Give me a couple hours, she'll give me 10 minutes. But it's okay, we love her. Welcome in, folks. Today, we are talking about updates. We, um... <sighs> I'm sweaty. I'm a sweaty tomato. I'm a humid tomato. Lay that, let, oh, yeah, there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll take over. I appreciate it. There she is. I, I got two minutes from her. That's what we got. All right, folks. Today we're talking about uh, Star Citizen update stuff. We just did what? I think it was nine and a half hours of 323 on, on Saturday. My apologies for not getting through that. That was uh, wreaking havoc on my back, but we will make it up this week. Oh, sorry, you're trying to get, get some leg air circulation going. We will make it up on this week uh, on Wednesday. I'm going to be getting back into the PTU. We'll do a lot more gameplay. But for today, my friends, we're talking about the month of report. And with it, of course, comes a lot of references, context, and posts from the past. Now, for some reason, for some reason, CIG's website, there we go. It wasn't loading before. I wasn't getting any of the pictures and stuff. Um, but now we're good. This is going to be a good one, folks. I skimmed this monthly report, and it's got, I'm sure many of you have read it or watched another summary of it or something. Um, and you've seen, it's got a lot of really good information in here. So we're going to be talking it up for today. We'll be on for a couple hours. You know how it is. Good old Mondays. Hyped Mondays. Calm Mondays, but hype Mondays. Um, and I'll be back with you for some gameplay on Wednesday and Friday. Welcome in, everybody, though. Good to see you, Holston Coop. C. McD. It's been a little while. C, how have you been? Vastin, I saw you get timed out in the beginning because you're a troll. You're, you're a horrible troll and bully in the garden. Kicked you out for it. That's the only reason why. It's not stream elements malfunctioning. Axis, good to see you, dude. Max Corpius, Echo Zeppelin, the Cat and Candy Milkman. Welcome. Luna Maria, thank you for the membership on YouTube. Welcome in. Look at that. Beginning a stream. Good to see you. Arcane 07s, my friend. Deplorable gaming. How deplorable. Someone gifted you a membership, thanks, but you're probably more of a weed than a juicy tomato in your garden. Nonsense. <laughs> all, all plants are welcome in the garden. We have no weeds. Except for except for worms, please. No, worms are great, actually. It's more ants. We don't like ants. You can go to different gardens, please. Got an hour before work starts. Turn on the commute hype. Yo, hope you have a good commute. Stay safe. Uh, hopefully you get some good info while you're on it. Courtesy of us. The Glass Sword, good to see you. Randy, Helco. hello. <laughs> welcome. Helcom. Comrade or Ken, woo, good to see you. Ninja Jim, paperback boy. Ninja, and a terrible bishop. Getting word that since the 12 hour stream was cut short, Tomato's gonna do it today too. Whoa, I didn't hear about that one. That's pretty cool though. Lady Space Patrol, good to see you. Elaine, legal, legafi. Hey, dingo, welcome, welcome, welcome. A lot of good names in here today. Y'all ready for some, some chitter chatter? about what's going on with this dang game. So I put out the podcast this morning. Um, actually, Mrs. Tomato put out the podcast this morning. And it is de it's detailing kind of early, early impressions of 3.23. And you all, if you were here for the stream on Saturday, you saw what I got to experience. It was rough because of the crashes, but the features themselves, I'm, I'm really liking. Now, I didn't get to experience everything was in the game for 10 hours still didn't experience everything um but if you watch that podcast you'll get a lot of some of my surface level opinions and also um solace from beyond the verse he joined me for this episode so that one's up on the second channel space tomato 2 or on audio platforms but that's kind of we're not going to talk too much about 323 today we're going to focus on the stuff in the monthly report so just wanted to start this off and let folks know if you do want to talk about 323 there is a whole hour and a half of it for you 
Sink your teeth into. Put your put your tongue on it. Soak in the taste. Don't be inappropriate about it though. Okay. Oh, I should probably start this recording. It's always great when I don't get the uh, inappropriate stuff on the recording, huh? Astro Marshall, good to see you. What's up, Fresh Prince? The core gameplay. Hello. Good to see you at a reasonable time. Hey, they're all they're all reasonable times, right? It's five o'clock somewhere. You already remember it was expired when you just popped in. Yeah, it'll just it'll let us know every month. I'm gonna thank you every month because it's appreciated every month. Thank you. This quality of life feels like a way too much, way too much art design with nothing really changing. That's unfortunate. I quite, I quite like I. As somebody who has suffered under the oppressive fist of Star Citizen's gameplay for several years, I humbly disagree. Echo, you liked engineering? I gotta get more hands on with it. We're, we're risking a lot of it too. Can't Bones. even power balance. Frish! Thank you for the prime, appreciate you. Hoping we get aquatic predators and prey animals eventually. Some, some salmon, space salmon. Decent howdy, howdy howdy. Been watching the videos for a while. Finally catching one of the live streams. Normally working at the moment. What finds you uh, taking a nice day off of work today? I hope it's for good reasons. And welcome to the live stream. We have we have good fun here. Valis, what's up, Toes Gang? Love the new map. The old one was probably the most frustrating thing for you during play sessions. The old map was. The old map is a reason people don't play this game. I know several people who are coming back to the game just because there's a new functional map in the game. It's it's actually quite quite wild. And the same goes for things like the Moby Glass or things like 30Ks. A lot of stuff that they're aiming to update for this patch. Here I am talking about 323. What did I say, folks? Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Let's get to the monthly report. 2024. Uh, this is... <laughs> the year's going to go down in the books. There's a lot of stuff going on. Like, we're, we're basically in the midst of another 3.0 era minus the horrible drought we kind of had a drought last year but now we are we're flowing we're good we didn't get monthly reports back during 3.0 we didn't get regular updates back during 3.0 so it's better than it was back then but in terms of how much it's changing in my opinion we're right back into the uh, lovely year of 2018 including the big tech overhauls with ocs and stuff so this monthly report's got a lot of that stuff in it it's got some ship stuff ships you know and love as well as some secrets and we get to finally talk some more cargo. Let's start with the AI section, though. So, in March, AI features continued to fix bugs and make improvements to human combat and other AI behaviors, saying one particular bug threatened to become our new standing on chairs issue, that being a bug that has a lot of individual causes, so can keep cropping up in different situations. So like with that issue, we adopted a belt and braces approach that should eliminate it. Even if, it, even if new causes crop up in the future. The standing on chairs thing, everybody everybody knows that. And actually, um, I'm always going to take the chance to... You know, if there's, there's always a good chance for a plug. Hello, we're going back to a video I made last year. That is... Oh, boy. Whoa, I just lost my spot. Okay. Um... This video, where is it? Where is it? Here. This one goes over this in in great detail. Um, it's actually a video that was, this is actually a video that was spawned by uh, my conversation with Yamix, who, who I do use in, in the intro to kind of introduce the idea. But the whole video is about why the game continues to remain buggy and why a lot of them don't get fixed. Um, among some of those things that comes up is, is this, that some bugs get caused by multiple things that come up because of different things changing in other places in the game. It just continued to keep happening. So I probably should have linked that. So if you do want to tuck that away in that back pocket of yours, um, I will drop this in the chat for anybody who wants to watch it. And uh, if you're watching this after the fact, 
it's out there somewhere no just a, just a google search you know a little youtube search that'll do it for you anyways let's continue ai tech Last month, AI Tech focused on finalizing and polishing features for Alpha 323 alongside optimizations for existing systems. For example, work on planetary navigation was completed with the team now able to generate navigation meshes over the entire planet. To achieve this, the devs used the same concepts the physics and planetary tech teams used for representing planet terrain patches. Compared to the previous implementations, where planet navigation tiles were represented as a cube or parallelopiped, or parallel pipe, parallel parallel pipid, as used in traditional navigation volumes. I swear I've seen this word before, but I cannot. <laughs> parallel, I want to say parallelograph or something. New method uses a volume with a skewed square rhombus base. While this brings new challenges, such as two, how two neighboring triangular navigation tiles will connect, it allows a navigation mesh to be generated everywhere and on all types of planets and moons. Holy crap, that was a paragraph, right? That was multiple sentences. I don't think I took enough breaths there. Check this out. We have, we have the footage. You know, if there's a topic, we've got the footage, right? What do you think it is? I'm thinking AI navigation. Something like this, nav mesh. Um, no, that's not a good enough one. This is, I think this is kind of similar to what they're saying. That's a bit, that's rhombus, right? But we want, ne oh, Mrs. Tomato is bombing the stream. Um, here is the navigation mesh being produced. This is a while ago. This is when they first implemented it. This is really what they're talking about though. The planet basically can get painted with a layer of information that tells AI where they can and cannot walk. And so what they're saying here is that they're just changing the, the shape in which these meshes are created. And it now allows them to produce them all over the planet, including at the poles, which was a difficult process for them before. Hey, everybody. Welcome in, folks. GFA, Clarky, good to see you. Crab T, Beast, Vanku, Tom, welcome. Hope you all are having a lovely Monday. We're here to make it better. For Boyds. Ha, <laughs> the old Boyds. The team continued to implement new rules and finalize synchronization between the server and clients. They also worked on additional iterations with design and polish. Polished the feature for release. I wonder what Boyd's we're getting. Because we have... Um, we have a bird in game. They just sneakily peekly it. Star Citizen sneakily peekly. Is it... Peakly, I always get the, the peak wrong. Is it peak with an E or an A? You never, you never know. You can't tell. Um, where's the new one? Man, I wish there was an easier way to find this stuff. <laughs> Here we go. So this is, um, I think this is the bird that we just got or like a variation of it. Obviously, that what they they made this much bigger than a Boyd would be. A Boyd is kind of like a a sprite almost in the game. It's not something you really interact with. Whereas this is something that's connected to missions. It has craftable ingredients that are used for crafting. So this isn't necessarily what they talk about when they're talking about Boyds. So I do wonder what they're bringing in on that aspect. All right, AI tech iterated on ship new ship behaviors with design. With the can we get? This is very intense music. Hit us with something like properly relaxing, you know, or a little bit dramatic even. Give me some dramatic backdrop. <laughs> okay, AI tech iterated on new ship behaviors with design with the aim of greatly improving the AI combat experience. Substantial improvements were made to the aiming control system for ships and turrets and to perception thanks to the addition of support for missile, missile detection. Missile. Got that missile detection. Um, always happy to hear about improved AI in all parts of the game. AI is probably what's going to end up making the game feel much more alive when it actually works as we would expect. Right now it's painful to see and doesn't work great because of server stuff. 
There are also times when it seems like it doesn't work great despite server stuff too. So we'll have to see where this all goes. But I, I'm hearing rumors that the ship AI and FPS AI are pretty good combat wise. What I want to see more of very, very soon is non AI or non combat AI being worked on social AI being worked on. Like what are what are non combat focused AI spaceships in the verse going to be doing? Are they going to be chattering on open voice comms? Are they going to be flying around the space stations willy nilly? Or are they going point A, point B all the time? Like we, we still don't have a lot of insight into the development side of that, just the design side, which, you know, they, we, we've seen with things like Quantum and some of the, some of the videos that they've released on that topic. I mean, I, I could even show you, um, probably AI ship might bring something up. Yeah. So like they've definitely been showing us what they want to do with AI flying ships coming into outpost. <laughs> Obviously this AI is still in the learning phase. Um, throwing out their landing gear, landing in a free spot. Like oh, this stuff is good. And we've seen a little bit of it, but I would definitely like to hear more from the um, combined design and, and development side. Yeah, would love some AI traders, you know, seeing a whole C or two coming in and out of the trade stations. It's what you'd expect. All right, now this is a little too calm. Can we, oh, let's do this playlist. This playlist always has some, some cool beat bops in here. No, no. Okay, that's a cool one. I like that. That's chill. Think we'll see proper working AI in Squadron 42 before we see it in the PU? Nah, nah. I think it'll be in the PU by the end of this year. Like, I, I really do think that server meshing is going to help with that a lot. Any news on the RSI Galaxy? No, not yet. We talked about it on the podcast yesterday, though. Solus from Beyond the Verse has some takes on it. I'd love to be a captain to just tell where to go and the AI pilot takes you there. Ah, yes. Laziness at its finest. Excuse me, take me to the grocery store. Of course, sir, the 100 eye. No, Benny, the javelin. I got a lot of groceries to get. What's up, Matt? You only missed a little bit. We're still in AI. I've been getting sidetracked plenty of time for you to get in here. Put some Italian music on. We'll go well with the not so lasagna you made. Ah, yummy though. Not so lasagna still has the same ingredients as lasagna from what I've heard, so still delicious. You love FPS gameplay, but you want to interact with the world and focus on other things. Salvaging is cool because it is kind of its own thing. You don't get anywhere else. But like 90% of games now, we have to shoot. Can't just simp. Give it time. Nom, 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 nom. They've nom, focused nom, nom, a lot on combat because it's easy to market. Uh, it's easy to develop. It, it's been used a lot for this game's the push in this game combat and ship combat have been the two biggest things we don't even have proper cargo hauling missions right but that's arguably the biggest part of the game that needs to work well um i say give it a little bit of time as they develop more of these systems we'll start to see that be more front facing as we get out of stanton and away from pyro and into more systems that are focused on in industry um I mean, stanton is kind of focused on industry i'll give it that but it is still the first system it's still a more dangerous system for 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 some things so i think we'll see more of it at some point soon think of meshing before squadron 42 for sure yeah 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 i don't think squadron 42 is coming out this year but i do think that we'll get server meshing this year once server meshing is up and running we get a big dump of features like we are for 323 yeah also it it unblocks a lot of the development of this game Man, so much of this stuff has been waiting for server meshing. Like, just like a lot of it was waiting for PES, getting that roadblock out of the way frees up so many engineers to maybe divert those resources to other things in the game. Maelstrom, quantum simulation, other things that are engineering focused. So I look forward to the post server meshing world, to be honest. I'm excited, I'm pumped, I'm hyped for server meshing, but the idea of what comes after it is very enticing too. Let's continue though. Elsewhere improvements were made to the navigation link system to reduce the computation cost over a frame by better utilizing the new navigation anchors concept. Subsumption loading logic improvements were also submitted that will more clearly show possible possible problems with the data so the designers can fix them sooner. Y'all know about subsumption. 
Come on. It's like a freaking tradition at this point. Subsumption. Open it up. There we go. Drop it. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I just... It's, it's, I feel like we do this every single month. Subsumption is like the most predictable topic in the whole monthly report. So every month we have a, a chance to come back and be like, subsumption is this. It's basically the, the logic of missions and AI. It's a, it's a flow path, flow chart, flow chart. And it can determine, you know, when this thing happens, something else happens. If this, then that, if this, then that, in terms of how the AI in the game and the missions that they are hooked to run so very powerful tool something that they've been working on for a while this is the 2023 version of it all the way back here we have the i think this is 20 this is also 2023 i could have sworn i had like a 2020 video clip of this somewhere maybe not but it goes back you know what i actually think it's in a different folder if i do sub there we go these are the old ones so i don't even know when this is from but like you can see it was it was pretty similar back then you watched your launch sequence podcast with beyond the verse scopes and zoom in true it is taxi for gpu but to think of it devs don't need to render whole scene for scope only one part only part only part one is aiming at yeah but it's still it's still like that. I think you would still have to render it. It would just be blocked from the player seeing it. So you still technically have to render the entire view. You're just kind of cropping it to the scope. That's that's what I would think. But I don't know how all this development works. That's for uh, that's for somebody. I guess maybe you could ask like one of the engine devs at some point. Maybe we'll get them in a podcast at some time. I am I'm I continue to poke them for it. We'll see what else we can get. Um, who else? will you know bless us with a little bit of discussion about star citizen on the ai tool side the team continued to improve and iterate on apollo that is the subsumption editor what we just talked about this included implementing a new version of the sticky header tree that shows a better representation of files and folders with behaviors and missions what about using upscaling for part one aims at whatever they can do man if if it works then do it but that's I will never know what it works. Elite Dangerous has excellent AI traffic everywhere in human occupied space, landing, out fighting, patrols, even mining in remote places. I want more of that. It's very immersive. I remember the first couple days I was playing Elite Dangerous and I jumped into a system and I saw in the text comms, it wasn't even a voice comms, text comms, a captain talking to their the people who the passengers on board their ship like little cruise ship and i could see the ship out in the distance and it was so cool it was literally just like a couple sentences of text obviously it's just being fed to me at a some kind of procedural you know hey you happen to run into the ship we'll give you some flavor text and you can move on but that little that little bit makes a huge difference and i can't wait to see that in star citizen all right on to the animation team. Uh, didn't do too much. They usually have a pretty short one on here, actually. They've been working on the space cow, a medium-sized bird, a predator wolf-like creature, as well as several new vehicles, entrance, animations. I'm, I think, I'm assuming these are the actual creatures we already see. This being the Copion, and this being the Mar, whatever this is, Mar, Marion, Marion, Mar, Marlin, Merrick, the Merrick. Uh, I don't know if those are what they're referring to here or if these are two additional creatures, but they, the, you know, both the creatures we know do kind of fit these descriptions. So I'll assume they are. We still got a space cow on the way, though. Love those space cow animations. Certified Gumbo, good to see you. Thank you for the sub, mate. 07 Hope Paul is well. I hope you're doing well, man. How are you feeling about Star Citizen right now? Server mission got demoed six a month ago, and cool as the tests were, they had loads of issues. True. But to be honest, I didn't expect them to be testing server meshing. Um, I, I say publicly at this point. I guess it's not public because not everybody can access it. But, like, I didn't expect them to be testing it outside of uh, the, the company at this point. So, 
while they still got plenty of work to do on it, and I think it will be, you know, I, I, I don't know where they are with it. They're still, while they're still, they're, they're sharing a lot of info with us, it's still pretty mum. Uh, and they're definitely not putting any timelines on it, which 100% props to them. Thank you so much for not putting timelines on 4.0 in this last letter from the chairman. That's a blessing. All right, art on the character side, folks. Let's go. In March, the character art team completed a range of branded racing flight suits and continued working on outfits for the Headhunters gang. The freaking Headhunters gang. Oh my God, I swear I said this probably last summer. If we hear about the headhunters one more time, I will kill them all in game. Luckily, by now we've we've seen the actual headhunters, so I'm okay with them continuing to mention it because I can go and reference this stuff for you guys now. Which is what we like to do. This is how monthly reports go. If you want the quick read through, I actually used to do a prepared video on the main channel, um, but I haven't done that in a while now. It's just because we've been so busy. But I like to give us a lot of depth when we go over this stuff here and a lot of context. So here you are. A look at the Headhunters gang and what they've been working on with it. Like eye, lip, and nose dust. But, oh no, it's the tattoo. Sorry, uh, butt customization. All right, so that's the headhunters. Um, just for some you know, context as to when we're reading these monthly reports, that's who they're talking about. It is a gang in... I think they're, they operate in multiple systems. Hold on. Where are they based? Headhunters gang, wasteland vibe, uh, located in Pyro, but offers completely different frontier aesthetic. So it says they're located in Pyro right now, but I do believe they are also in a couple of other star systems. So we might see them elsewhere in the game, but they are coming in for the Pyro system. Um, they uh, have armor fabricated from metal and bone. I don't know what kind of missions they prefer to go with, but I'm consuming with the bones and the skulls and the stuff. They're kind of trying to say, hey, we're bad guys. We're, we're, we're violent. I don't think your claim jumpers are putting skulls on their chest. That would might send the wrong message. There's something like render texture. It's basically you have a virtual camera in game. Yeah, they actually use that in this. Render to texture is uh, used for the all of the communications between characters. So when you see a character pop up in Star Citizen, Rowena Dooley, anybody that you are fighting in the game, a mission giver, you're actually seeing what they're doing somewhere else in the game universe. And they're using the technology called Render to Texture to basically copy whatever is going on in that scene and project it somewhere else. Good technology, but it's still it, it can still bog down a scene with uh, a lot of render processes and stuff like that if you are doing it a lot in one scene since you can't control the amount of scopes somebody has in a scene that that can get iffy they should switch to unreal then <laughs> scott stop it oh 
Hope you can cause environment harm by breeding space cows on different planets. Actually, the space cow is very, very, very common because they've basically implemented it into the terraforming process. If they want a planet to have human life, they just bring the space cow there because that's how standard it is in the human diet and supplements and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's, it's interesting. It's good for the lore. It makes sense so they could just have it all over the game. What's up, Artemis? I was hoping to catch you live. Congrats on the Asmund Gold video about server meshing. Thank you. I was supposed to start this stream going over that. Thanks for the reminder. Maybe we'll do that at the end of the stream. Hello, Berlin. All right. Let's continue with art on the sh All of this because a dog is walking past our fence. <laughs> Hold on a second. The dog. <laughs> she just wants to be on stream, I think. Will there be a reset coming soon? There might be. They might be doing one with uh, 323. We don't know yet. <sighs> we want to go to Citizen Con. We will see. We will see. Um, we have our tickets. And so we are beginning the process. And um, yeah, as of right now, the plan is for us to go. Where's the dog cam? Gotta, gotta, <laughs> don't quite have that much yet. Still need more cameras for a dog cam. UE5 is awesome. Uh, UE5, Unreal Engine 5 would have, would hold, wouldn't hold a candle to this game if, for this game. So I think I think they will have the things that do best for this game, um, whether it be functional, visual, or optimization based. There might be things that would work better for this game because it's primarily a space game versus Unreal Engine, which is an everything kind of engine. Um, and things that might work better for Unreal Engine being an everything engine that wouldn't be as useful or as um, worth the time in Star Engine. So I think they're going to keep doing whatever it is that is best for this game, but I'm glad that they're coming up with their own solutions for uh, things that they can continue to iterate on, improve, and build upon over the next decade or two or three or however many they want this engine to last. All right. Art on the engine side. March saw progress on the RSI Zeus. Graybox was completed and all functionality has been validated. Da, 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 da. With the ship currently in the beauty and polish stage, habitation and the central hallways made significant progress and are approaching completion. While the cargo hold continues to progress with the loading ramps, main piston structure improving rapidly, as well as the ramp interior and exterior. Oh, we got to make sure to check in on that main loading ramp piston structure. It's an interesting detail to call out. The landing gear is nearly complete and the overall exterior continues to progress too. Let's, let's, we, why don't we check out what the RSI Zeus looks like? I know a lot of you are foaming at the mouth for this one. It is a, it's a, I don't blame you. It's a solid ship. Um, and it's a good size. It's looking like it's going to be really nice for two, three, maybe four people to skedaddle battle around in the game under different types of gameplay. You're going to have a little bit of marketing speech mixed in here, but this is a good look at the game or at the ship in white box. This is months, months prior to where we are right now. So the ship is well past this, but here's at least this should give you some idea of what it is. Concept. We're not just going to show you some images. The Zeus is actually an act of white, do white box development right now. Do you just want to have a look? Yeah. Shall we? Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right, so as you guys have seen with the Spirit 
and with the many ships we've released thus far, our ships can, when they're finished, look absolutely gorgeous. But before any of them get to that point, they have to grow through a very specific development process. And this is the first stage in that process. We call this white box. At this point, we've taken the concept, ripped it to shreds, and then reassembled it and plugged it all back together within the editor so that we can get a real good look at what players are gonna see when they finally get this game. At this stage, with the Zeus, we've already ripped out all the thrusters, we've ripped out the landing gear, the turret, the seats, the beds, all of the interior spaces, plug those guys back in, and we have what you see here. So again, the beginning of the process. At this point, we're able to jump in, start throwing in cargo, interacting with doors, getting in and out of beds, maybe in and out of toilets, and just getting an overall sense of what it feels like to interact with the vehicle. And it is very common that in this stage, we will make some adjustments from the original plan. As an example, on this ship, we've just made the decision to expand the center corridor, add a little bit more space to the rooms. And as a result, that's gonna make it much smoother experience for players to traverse the, inter the interior of the ship as well as for AI to traverse the interior of the ship. We've also expanded the main airlock that leads to the enter exit ladder. And up here in the cockpit, we've separated the co-pilot seats a tad bit just to allow players to get in. That is a, a tight, easy. this is a tight fit for three people. This looks almost, this looks just a little bit bigger than the Mantis. Um, maybe, maybe I'm just not getting a good perspective here, but I honestly, I feel like this looks not that much wider than the Mantis, which is a one person cockpit. So I'll be interested to see, I, I'm, it doesn't look like these seats move forward. So I guess they're keeping them kind of vertically displaced as well as horizontally to, to give them more space, man, as many people in the front though, as, as a co um, a constellation, the idea of three a three person probably four person ship eh, three three person i don't think you have a, any you don't have any turrets on the regular one do you this is probably a comfortable three person ship if you keep engineering and uh defense and logistics you know between the three of you this is going to be an interesting ship to see how it works i don't know if we have any others that really fit this so efficiently i like it because the freelancer would be probably the main competitor to this um and i guess yeah it does it does i i'll have to we have to do like a direct comparison between the freelancer and this when it comes out easier so with white box not the prettiest stage in the process but it is essential that we nail this because it means we'll be able to deliver a beautiful ship that is also extremely fun to play so that is the zeus that's at least what they were doing on it back then and if you want to see the, like the finished so what the what it looks like um in the concept and the vertical stabilizers we also work to maintain the silhouette of the original detail. then uh the interior is it's it looks really well designed it's compact they can fit a lot into this thing this thing is about the same size as a spirit um the the Crusader Spirit. So, you know, the Crusader Spirit is a hallway, a cockpit, and a back bay here for the C1. This thing in the same amount of size is able to fit all these, all this stuff. And then on this, on this model, We've also added big added cargo. Capacity to the base of the wings. It, all, it gets VTOL thrusters and huge cargo there capacity. There is an absolutely massive rear to it compared to the others. A massive the rear. areas have been massively pushed so that you don't get much space but we can get way more cargo in. It actually has four times the cargo capacity of the S coming in at 128 SUs of cargo. That's a lot for this being the same size just about as a Spirit, about 45 meters long. So good ship. It's going to be an interesting one. Good for small groups of friends. If you've got a friend that you know you're going to play Star Citizen with, um, and you know, I know you might not plan to do that all the time, but trust me, it's going to be a much more fun game if you can bring somebody along every once in a while. That'll be a good ship to work towards. We'll, we'll see how it comes about. But folks, just because this is saying gray box completed and stuff, don't, it doesn't mean they're going to release this right away. They might hang, they might hang on to this for a little while. 
um, to release with 4.0. It might come out at CitizenCon. Um, I don't think this is going to be a 3.23 patch. Uh, like, I don't think this will be released in the 3.23 range. I think this is going to be later on in the year still. Cockpit window looks kind of weird with so much glass. Hey, man, what do you got against glass? We're good friends. It, it protects me, keeps the wind out of my face. I can see through it. Good relationship. Okay, the Anvil Legionnaire is white box complete. <laughs> this is an interesting ship. Oh, Jesus. Sorry, I got really angry there. This is an interesting ship. The Legionnaire is, I think arguably the the kind of most awkward ship in the game in my opinion um because it feels like it sits in a role that most ships could do they made this thing purpose-built for docking Master and boarding around. okay we don't need all that uh they made this thing purpose-built for docking and boarding right but other ships can also dock so then this thing is also purpose-built oh my god to hack into things, but then you can also hack from other things. So developing this, they're gonna, it, it, I almost think that they're building hacking and boarding around what this ship is based on. And I hope that doesn't make it all too weird. Like, what I'm trying to say is I hope this ship excels at boarding. It doesn't dominate. It's not the only thing that can do it, right? They, they talk about how with this ship, the main thing you get out of it is the ability to hack another ship to accept your docking approval. That's fine. As long as you can also just go to that docking collar and like blow it open or something with another ship, right? So I, I hope that that's the case. I look forward to seeing how they make this gameplay feasible. But this is a weird ship. Here's, here's just like a little bit of talk about what the heck it is and how it works. It's in white box, so remember, um, that means that hacking and boarding gameplay is probably getting a step up sometime later this year. I'm, I'm gonna assume it's 4.0. Anyways, here it is. Genev fills a, a gap in our lineup for both more lawful and less lawful careers where you need to take charge of another person's ship. Traditional flow for ship to ship docking is the, the person who wants to dock to the other ship requests it from the parent ship and it's on the parent ship's uh, pilot to accept or deny that. Whereas the Legionnaire has on board uh, hacking abilities in the hacking minigame to perhaps forcibly override that uh, acceptance and allowing it uh, to happen instead. For players that are on the, the, the lawful side, um, its prime use is bounty hunting. For those perhaps with more more military focus, it is like Anvil's dedicated military boarding ship. Uh, and for those on the other side of the spectrum, it, piracy is its main, main role. So you are there able to uh, attach and board other ships and take their crew goods or ship itself. That's that's the Anvil Legionnaire. Uh, looking forward to this one because it's a, a ship that appeals to, to both sides of the law. Uh, it brings with it uh, a new side to an existing gameplay loop or existing gameplay loops. It expands upon them. And it's something that I know a lot of players have been waiting for a long time is that the ability to board other ships uh, forcibly because it's sort of, it takes away that safety a lot of players have at the moment where I'm, I'm safe on my ship. No one's coming on here without uh, without destroying me. Uh, so people are really going to have to start thinking twice when these things hit the persistent universe. This is going to be a another hot point for the PvP conversation, I think. People are going to be terrified of just constantly getting boarded, but I, I think it's going to be limited by things like shields. Uh, obviously, this ship's going to be incredibly vulnerable if it is trying to board somebody else. I, I don't think that forceful boarding is going to be a problem unless you get, like, you're attacked by a gang, right? Who's brought themselves a quantum dampener and all this stuff. And this, this again, factors into, like, with damage systems changing, ships aren't going to blow up. So everybody's like, oh, 
Why would we ever board a ship when they all just die immediately? They're, they're not going to. Uh, pretty soon they're not going to. You're rarely going to just blow up. Most of the time your ship will just get disabled and you'll have to call for a beacon for help. You'll have to ask for repair or something. Somebody will have to come out and get you. You get your ship repaired or you get towed back to a station. Like There's a whole deluge, deluge of things that can happen out of the verse that are going to diversify things a lot but at the same time man with the way that people are reacting to like things like engineering uh people are very hesitant at this game getting deeper in this sense and i know a lot of that is because people think it's going to be monotonous kind of gameplay but <sighs> yeah there's a lot there's a lot of conversation there you'd say well that's because this is the first iteration of that gameplay they're getting in the basics and they want to build upon that to make it better and then the response is well they need to stop giving us alpha stuff it's been 10 years and it's it's a circle of conversation um but i do hope that while i worry about how this will come into the game ultimately i hope it comes in and it helps to complicate experiences and make more variation for gameplay that's my bottom line more choices the team's work on the resource network began with 10 ships nearing completion. Nice. Nearing completion is good. It's only 10 ships, but it's good. We're working. We're getting there. Say maybe, hopefully, if they can get 50, 50 ships in. I don't know. Do they want to have all the ships done for engineering by 4.0? What's the plan there? Some of which of them uh, received the update list of ship items. Following gameplay validation, relay locations will be polished. Update work on a legacy ship continued too, with updates to the dash cockpit and some exterior housings. Wonder what the legacy ship is. And I wonder if they're insinuating it is the RSI ship or if this is the, uh, this might be the Zeus that they're showing us here. What's the file name? Art ships. <laughs> All right, all right, pup. Okay, pup. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Bark, spark, spark, sparks. All the barks. Bark, spark, bark, bark, bark. Bark, 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 bark. Placeholder. Cool. Awesome. We don't know what it is. Why would they leave it in the file name? That dog's spitting. <laughs> oh, it's a her. Why is she yelling at me? You know why? Because there is another dog walking past. That's why. Connie's need it. Connie does need a rework. I don't think that's what they're showing here. I think that'd be too much of a giveaway if this was just the Connie. I think this is the, uh, the Zeus. Seems like engineering will be pretty sick on huge capital ships needing great organization and not a big deal on small ones, but everything in between is purgatory. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that kind of makes sense to me. People are 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 very worried about the idea that like a constellation is going to take three or four people on board. But like, that's the point. I saw folks saying that like they would need to add ships to all or seats to all these ships in order to make enough space for engineers, not realizing that the engineer doesn't have to just be an engineer. The engineer can be a turret gunner. You can be preparing meals. You could be moving around the logistics cargo on board if you need to. You could be the co-pilot doing mi missile stuff like you can wear multiple hats on these ships, which is kind of nice. The call to prayer has officially been replaced by cute doggo. <laughs> She's calling for a different kind of prayer, one that involves more foods. All right, core gameplay. This is the most exciting time. Of, this is the most exciting part of the monthly report now because they've just combined all the exciting teams into one section. And it's going to take us a while. So sit back. They can't multi-roll in combat. You're pulling fuse or you're gunning, not both. That is true. So for combat, there would be a difference. Like... The engineer probably would not be a turret gunner, but maybe they are still like the logistics person, or maybe they're the one who's doing the cargo loading when you're off times. Maybe they're the navigator who's looking at the star map and getting the best routes. 
I just feel like there are opportunities for people to do multiple things on a, on a, uh, on a ship. And there will probably be other ones, too. At least, that's the hope. Point being, I don't think those extra seats... I don't think ships are going to need extra seats. Maybe some of them. But uh, most of them, I think, were built with this kind of gameplay in mind. All right. Last month, the gameplay team, my friends. The gameplay team. Uh, it successfully passed the go-no-go no go gates for procedural recoil, new scopes, dynamic crosshairs, and reload improvements. Further bug fixing is currently ongoing for these deliverables. All of these are pretty uncontroversial. Dynamic crosshairs gets people a little bit, but that one is disableable. Um, I think the biggest things that people are not happy about with the FPS stuff right now are the... Um, I guess it's the, the scopes, kind of, the new scopes and the view they give. And uh, hit markers, I think. Looks like an air, air assault type ship. Kind of reminds me of the Pelican from Halo. Why group members can't bed log on ship, but large larger ships appear that they will depend on more than one person to operate. I think the group members not being able to bed log is temporary right now. Wave 2 EPTU. Um, they'll probably just transition into the PTU phases after the Wave 1. Hello, Millspec Mom. We'll need people doing both all the time. Hammerheads will need people doing both all the time. That's true, yeah. Why is it sold as requiring minimum crew size of one? Any ship can operate with one, technically. Most people want crew for combat, and when they get attacked, they will not be happy. Fair. A lot of people aren't going to be happy. After 12 years of being with SC, you might be walking away soon for a bit at least, as you have started falling in love with this new game, Star Sim Simulator. For sure, my dude. Have a good one. There are tons of space games to play. That is the joy of life. I know you've been really excited about that game. Go have a blast with it, man. We'll see you when you're ready to come back and, and check this one out. Or, you know, hang out and check out both. I'll probably be covering that one at some point, too. Abdi, what's up, dude? Good to see you in chat. Pre-fight checklist that we'll need to conduct before taking off. I hope that's what the tuners are up for, you know? As a tuner, you can basically overclock the ship before you go out. Hey, let's strike. Good to see you. The Matrix of Lies, that's fair. <laughs> your minimum crew requirements for some ships will change when engineering comes into effect they might progress was also made on ammo repooling including network optimizations and bug fixing the looting ui was also updated to support the way ammo is repooled while reload animations now play at the correct time following the rummage animation i don't like the rummage animation but I'll be okay with it as long as we can still physically interact with objects when we're looting. What I mean by that is if you watch the way that um, looting works. Cool FPS combat and see if he which has seen shows suite you. of improvements from improving. They don't even show the animation here. Um, I don't know if I have a good video of it. Hmm. Nope, I don't think I have a clean video of this menu, unfortunately. When you do use this looting screen, basically it just shows your character kind of reaching their hand out to, to emphasize that you're picking something up, which is cool, that's fine. Um, but I do want to make sure that we're still getting that physical interaction. They physicalize all the objects on the body. They spent a lot of time doing it. And they put a lot of emphasis on the fact that they were doing it. So I do hope that is something they still continue to do with the actual physical interaction system. What's up, Meet Your Maker?
Mills back mom thank you for the super chat appreciate you oh seven fellow veterans canix in chat oh we've got a lot of canix in chat good old french cad is a uh... <laughs> french cad is our resident quebecian in the org in the uh garden Does anyone know if in 323 you can finally find your mothership when you're in your snub? You can save a, a marker. Oh, you can't do that because it's in space. If you... Nope, can't do it on the planet either. No, you probably can't. SC, CIG wants combat to be measured and risky. May better, may better to run than fight more often than not. Combat in this game is going to have to get longer term for it to be that risky, you know? And for it to be that intensive that you need to pay attention to all the ships and stuff, combat just going to need to be longer term. And medical ships are going to have to be able to allow for easy respawns in, in at least close proximity. That's how I feel. Because you got to be able to get a lot out of setting up combat if, it's, if it takes that much thought and that much preparation. Reap what you sow, as the kids say. Work, can, work continued on pre-production for base building with gameplay features working closely with art and design to refine requirements and define metrics. Base building. A topic I did not expect to be talking about in 2024, to be honest. Let's go listen to what they had to say about base building because there was a lot. We, we still have not done a deep dive on this topic. I'm still waiting for a little bit more info to come back on this and I need to definitely get myself back into the archives to see what kind of stuff they used to say about base building back in the day but um at least we do have a pretty lengthy segment on it here so i'll let you guys listen to a little bit of this and hear what they have planned for base building because it's going to be a big part of star citizen going forward listen in go but we feel it's the future of star citizen and it's the actual the culmination of multiple different game systems coming together so why don't you play the video All that came up because of it said land claim down there and people realized this was base building.
I get so many satisfactory vibes from like the song here. <laughs> and then like this visual, there's like a visual up here. This one, we just like also getting satisfactory vibes. Ah, oh, man. Okay. Um, let's go through the important parts here. Talk about a little bit of crafting. Or is it to be off grid and be completely self-sufficient? So with that, with your prep and everything like that, we've got blueprints. So the, the recipes, everything in the game is fabricated from a blueprint. Players acquire blueprints via reputation rewards, um, missions, or rare NPCs. With any blueprint, you can actually do research on it and then create different variations. With materials ranging from the common to ultra rare, you might find them at the local shop or have to travel around the universe to collect them. Unrefined, refined, simple materials, or even complex components will all go into the fabrication. With this, then you've got location, location, location. First area is high security, so you must purchase the land. The base is actually invulnerable because of the planetary shield tech. A security will show up to protect it as well. You pay for the privilege, you're taxed. So at this point, um, you won't have the best resources available. You won't have access to the best resources available on the planet. If you don't pay your taxes, the shields will go away after a period of time, and the base will become derelict and will collapse. But this is low risk, low reward. Then you've got low security. So again, you must purchase the land. It's owned by an independent corp, gang, or faction. Again, you don't have access to all the best resources on the planet. The base is vulnerable. AI NPCs will show up and protect the base if it's attacked. The protection will escalate. Um, over time. Player can also build defenses to help mitigate this as well, and then it's medium reward, medium risk. Then you've got lawless. So this is no protection other than what you build. There's shields, anti-air. Players can disable the shields by getting close to them. Now, and see, that sounds, that sounds like your end game DayZ Rust kind of gameplay, is the no security. Everything else here sounds like it's mainly going to be i guess low security is one thing high security sounds like it's all going to be pretty by the books like pretty standard you got a place and you're it's not going to be at risk you know they might say it's at risk but it's not at risk low security sounds like it's kind of a little bit more risky and that'll be where a lot of people probably spend their time places like in nix and maybe even magnus and and the offshoots of like Terra, I don't know, or, or Stanton, maybe. No security, though. That sounds like the play, the stuff that people are like scared of. Getting bombed all the time, getting attacked while you're offline, that kind of stuff. And I think they're really going to go out of their way to make sure they make these very, very distinct. Because clearly they want a lot of people who are really casual to put a lot of time into base building in this game. This is going to be one of their cash cows. The cosmetics you can do with base building is going to be crazy in this game. Base building, hangar customization, ship customization, a lot of it. So... I think they're going to protect the people who want to do this protected. They're going to give the people who want the more wild side of this, the craziness that they're looking for. High risk, high reward. Since there's no taxes, no protection fees, you get a high return on the resources that you collect. Now, there's some cross shard and server meshing considerations that will we'll kind of adjust this design in the future, but we'll get into that later once, we, once we're really building it. So from here, you've got the tools, so this is what we would consider a surveyor. Um, with this, we want to actually cater to everybody's play style, whether you're solo or in an org. With this, you've got different buildings that you can produce, from small, medium to large, to XRL, or XL. So with the surveyor tool, you can only build the small buildings. With a vehicle, you can build small and medium-sized buildings. With the Galaxy, you can build small to large structures. And then, obviously, with the Pioneer. <laughs> Pioneer can do it all. And it still works as a mobile base. And we'll uh, talk about some of the more expanded features that we're adding to it in, in later on. So, um, and then it's also, we're exploring what can be done in space, not just on the planet. <laughs> so from here, you set off on your journey. So with the land claim, 
You put your tool down where you want, you launch the drone that is built into the machine, and then from there, this allows the player to access the base building and also land claim mode. With the land claim modes, the player can actually change the size and position of what, what area they want to claim, and it also shows you the cost and taxes associated with it. If it's in a taxable zone and you don't own the land, this interface will default to it. So if you own the land or it's in a lawless area, it will automatically go to the base building mode. So with the overhead view of the land, you can actually place down buildings exactly where you want. You can see the resources beneath the surface. And then you can also place multiple buildings before you actually build. So you can see how it will all kind of come together. You'll see the resources that are needed for it. And then... I'm going to jump forward a little bit here. Just talk about some of the more interior stuff. There's not too much crunchy detail. This is mostly a design talk, but it does give an idea of their intention. Now you can actually fill the room the way that you want to fill it. So furnishings can be purchased at different locations, or they can actually be fabricated. You can do that via first person or in a dedicated mode in the surveyor's tool. With that, you've got different types of buildings. So you've got utility style, which would be garages, freight elevators, landing pads, storefronts. And then you've got extractors. So with, re with extractors, we want to make sure that nothing in regards to resource gathering is fully automated. A, player, a level of player engagement is always needed. So as Nick talked about before, there are different types of commodities, radioactive, perishable, et cetera. What you'll be doing is pulling out full containers. Then from there, it'll be repairing, or there's wear and tear associated with it, or even misfires like you saw in Thorsten's talk and Guillermo's talk yesterday. There's also upgrade paths for making them more efficient or resilient. Power generators. So with different types of power generators, there, there'll be some that are more cost effective as well as effective in different areas. Solar panels will not always work in darkness. Fuel generators will need to be filled up every now and then, and then batteries to store excess power. Then you've got producers. So things that will require the players to combine different resources to produce new items. And then you've got defense. So anti-air, anti-personnel, and then shield generators. And then the big one. We start development Q1. So. OK. That's and me. that's where we come in. Thank that you. was kind of the craziness that people were like, wait, what? You're going to start development on this? Doesn't mean they're going to finish development in Q1, but we are. Technically, this is this is the report on Q1, right? So what is it that they said about base building here? Uh, where are the where the f were we? <laughs> Uh, here we go. Work continued on pre-production for base building with gameplay features working closely with art and design to refine requirements and define metrics. Pre-production? I... I don't know. Start... starts pre-development in Q1 2024? What does it mean? Who knows? I don't think we should place too much emphasis on the idea that it starts development in Q1 2024. That means literally nothing for when we're gonna see it in the game. It just means that they're working on it, which... Don't get me wrong, on its own, it's a big deal. The fact that they're working on base building, it could mean it's two years out, but working on it <laughs> means the design docs are down, the engineering is ongoing, and anything that they are working on gameplay related at this point is being built with game base building in mind. So all of the engineering systems they're building, the resource network stuff, the maelstrom stuff, all those damage systems, all the metrics that they're using and different stuff is all getting factored into base building, which is good, but we don't know when it's coming. So we'll keep an eye on this. I'm sure we're going to see it in monthly reports for the next 1200 months, um, but I'm excited to see how that changes, at least over the months. Testing in Q2, Q3, maybe. I think I don't, I'm not expecting to see anything on this, at least until like 4.1, 4.2. Where will you put your base if only have Pyro, Nix, and Stanton? Probably Nix. I would say. That'd be interesting. Ultimately, I'm just waiting for Magnus. Once Magnus comes out, we stomp. They told A90 Jump buyers that some degree of decorating will be possible, like buying fish for the empty aquariums, but they still wait. You can't monetize it yet. You gotta give them some time. Keep in mind, base building doesn't have to mean all of this. 
right? This is this is hefty base building. Look at the different tiers of base building that they're introducing us to here. I'll, I'll replay this one more time. This is a very important point. We'll Check this out. Once, we, once we're really building it. So from here, you've got the tools. So this is what we would consider a surveyor. Um, with this, we want to actually cater to everybody's play style, whether you're solo or in an org. With this, you've got different buildings that you can produce from small, medium to large to extra L or XL. So with the surveyor tool, you can only build the small buildings. So that right there is probably their first launch of base building. This is already getting out of the realm of what they could probably do this year. But again, who knows with the way that they're working now, they're doing things differently. Um, but I do think that the first version of base building is going to be something pretty simple like that. So testing that at the end of the year, not too crazy. Building out entire cities for your org. <laughs> I don't think we're going to get there anytime soon. But again, who knows? I don't. 323 is like a brick wall. We can't see through it to what development looks like once we're past it. So still a guessing game. But anyways, let's continue here. Core gameplay. We've been, we've been skedaddling. The team then added different colored loot screens depending on whether the, the player is looting an enemy, friendly, or neutral entity. They also added a button to go from the inventory to the loot screen and a pop-up window when an item swap can't be performed. They also allowed for separate loot screen styles between the visor and lens. That's solid. Regarding the visor and lens, the conversion of on-screen chat to building blocks was completed. The loot screen's interesting. I like it. Um, it feels pretty nice and polished. I like that there's different colors for different types of entities and the button to get from the inventory to the loot screen is nice. It does, it is, it is very much, these are all big shifts for the game. So I understand why people feel a little anxious about the way the inventory is changing, the, the UI is changing. It's definitely more gamey feeling. I'm not sure if that's a bad thing though. I like having a quick light UI that is fairly intuitive, I think, and straightforward um, with sound effects, little ding, 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 while you're using it. That's nice. Good sh man. The team then converted more markers to the new system, including navigation, ships, player, party, mar party members, missions, and landing pads. I don't like the AR markers. I like their animations. I like that they're a little eye-catching. They have different colors. I'm down for all that, but they are too shapely, shapely. Um, they're, 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 they've got, they're kind of chunky. They feel a little bit unpolished. They feel like, like there's almost outer glow on them. Like they're not, the, the, the outline of them is not clear cut. I like a very minimal, simple style. That's, that's just what I like. Other people might like the new style. Again, I think it's still an upgrade from what we had before, but I hope that they dial those icons in a little bit more. For EVA, the devs unblocked animation content to support weapon customization and two-handed carry to work with the new EVA system. They also provided support for backward and sideways flying animation content. EVA thruster packs now relate correctly to the layer of equipment. Get out of here. The layer of equipment players are wearing, meaning VFX will come from the thruster nozzles on armor pieces or backpacks instead of the undersuit. This is actually pretty key because at some point we're going to have both armor and undersuits that don't have any sort of um thrusters on them so you're gonna have to actually pay attention to do you want an a sp sp god do you want a specific type of armor that can carry more stuff or do more stuff or has more power at the expense of not having control over your direction in space because in that sense you might want to carry around a tractor beam to control yourself or you might only be able to use your hands to crawl around so like it's just another kind of part of that risk versus reward, make a choice and deal with the consequences sort of gameplay that Star Citizen likes to build on and, and focus on. Um, for those of you who have been watching us play in the PTU, you've seen how this new model works. It's pretty good. It's very nice in the way that it frees up how your, your legs from banging into everything. It works smoothly. Everything about it is just completely different from the old one in that it works and it's enjoyable to use. This is one of the best additions of this pass, patch, I think. And, and I don't care if you think it's a visual change because it adds a lot of functionality. Fish tanks don't require work, do they? 
You don't know my fish tanks. We're gonna need fusion cores for our powered armor. Ah, I think they're just batteries. But yes, we will need power supplies for armor. Probably something else that's going to make people not super happy. EVA is probably the most polished feature they've ever delivered. Don't say that, it's gonna break. <laughs> it's very fragile, they're like wine glasses, man. Can't talk nice about them. Okay, improvements were made to how shop items are highlighted when players look at them and the positioning of AR cards was updated to account for mannequins and vehicles based on designs feedback. The team completed buy and rent interactions for physical shopping too. I like the new interactions, the UI, I'm not crazy about it, but the, the new interactions, the animations, the sound effects, everything again feels like it's more of a game that I'm playing than a testing model. Gameplay features made further improvements to prone locomotions while additional support was added to animation to unlock animation asset production. For master modes, improvements to aiming and targeting for the gunnery system were completed and ESP saw further improvements, including smoother response to player input. If you're here regularly, you know that a lot of this stuff does end up in the game. But if you ever hear people tell you that like, hey, you don't know when that's coming to the game. It's not going to come to the game. They're saying it, but it's years away. This stuff is actively in the patch notes. The monthly report is is by far the best place to find out what's going on with this game before it gets made official. Well, I guess that is it getting made official, but you know what I mean. Throughout March, development continued on the resource network. As part of this, electromagnetic emissions are now based on power consumption and infrared emissions are based around coolant and heat generation. This is exciting. It's f phenomenal that they're... These systems being stuff that gets depicted by emissions means that stealth gameplay gets started. Um, it means that the size of ship you're using starts to be considered. Bigger is not always better. If you could carry a very valuable 20 million UEC item in the back of 100i from one system to another, but you have the opportunity to carry it in a Caterpillar, you should choose the 100i because bigger is not always better. 100i gets by sneakier, it fits into more places, it also has a refinery, so it's kind of got unlimited range, but like, these are, this is a big part of why ships aren't necessarily going to be pay to win. And, and I know that's a touchy topic. I guess more pay to progress. It's just as much about the ship that you're choosing and, and as it is how you're using it. And the idea that if you are pumping more power or something like that, you get worse emissions, making you a little bit more vulnerable in a dangerous system. I'm all for that. And I think there was a little bit more on this too. Um, I think there was something else about the resource network here. Yeah, picking the right ship for the job. And you could see just how far back they were working on this. This is like 2020. They're working on this very simple sort of engineer debug based layout for the resource network is the most basic way you could get it. You know, they just had shapes for each thing. They were connected through these little lines and that gave us an idea of where they wanted to go with it. And then eventually they gave it to us on screen. Why don't I have any engineering gameplay? Is it called engineering? No, where the heck? Guess I don't have this one up yet. I just have the footage that we actually got at CitizenCon. Well, there you go. This <laughs> it's a look at what engineering looks like now. Um, but it's come a long way. They put a lot of work into it and it's taken a while and it's come a long way and it's a little bit frustrating. It's a little weird. It might make you very nervous about the direction the game is going in, but it's a system that they've been, they've built the entire game sort of with the expectations that at some point this is how it's gonna work. And uh, they'll have to dial it in, they'll have to figure it out. We're not getting the full implementation of it yet, so it'll probably feel a little weird with some holes missing, but this is kind of the quote unquote sea of thievesing of, of Star Citizen if you will. 
You're concerned master modes will make mining with the prospector very slow? Not tried it yet, but worried about what everyone is saying. Make mining slow. Why is that? I'm hoping to go to CitizenCon this year. Yes, me and Mrs. Tomato, we got our tickets. And uh, we're going we're gonna to go through the process to get there. You tried it. Prospector is fine. What is the worry about the prospector? That it would fly too slow? Like in between mining jobs? Sea of Thievesing. Not Sea of Thieves of Star Citizen. Just the, just the idea that you're going to need to scramble around your ship to take care of problems that pop up. And uh, keep the ship running while you're out there doing your bootying. Hope to take a picture with you in line again. That would be awesome. Hope to see you again. Flying from one signature to another? Nah, I don't think so. You're gonna switch to navigation mode. It takes like five seconds. Fly to the other system. In fact, you could probably use your master modes to slow down faster when you get to the next place. Update your drivers. Update your drivers. Oh, they're adding Vulcan to the game today, huh? Finally, here we go. Okay. Where were we? The team also improved various debug tools and fixed bugs and supported the ongoing testing of an experimental arena commander mode. A temporary solution for ship hull pen penetration was added until Maelstrom is ready for to support physical ship armor. This is a big one that'll stop ships from dying so much. This system, they say, is subject to change as development and testing progresses, but currently all projectiles can deplete armor health. However, only ballistic weapons can penetrate the, dull, the hull and damage internal components. We saw this during my engineering com um, session on the stream on Saturday. If you weren't at that stream, it is on the main YouTube channel. You can check it out. You got like nine and a half hours of footage to scroll through, but it is there. You can see the ballistics flying through the ship. For life support, the team optimized the dynamic room atmosphere pressure uh, system and made it network compatible. Various improvements and refactors were also made to the room system and various debug tools were greatly improved to, imp to allow the team to test the system before the player facing UI is complete. Life support should be interesting. How many of you are going to troll your friends just like take the oxygen out of their room while they're piloting the ship? <laughs> A lot of master modes feel art artificial limitation-y to you, especially when switching... To SCM and landing gears down. True, the landing gear down thing will be disableable, but the yeah, the, the forced the forced speed limit stuff is weird. When does the new big update come to the game with more players and stuff? You think in server meshing, that'll be 4.0, probably later in the year. 220 player at the moment. Did you miss something? Did you miss what do you mean? You think it's going to cause a lot of backlash? Cause what? Vulcan or engineering? Or life support? For transit, the team's primary focus in March was supporting cargo elevators and instanced hangars. Alongside general refactoring, this required adding hangar destination exporting, communication between the transit and instance managers for available hangars, the ability to dynamically add destinations to transit carriages, requests for the creation of hangars, and support for capturing peripherals in dynamically added hangars. This is basically all about making sure hangars get spawned correctly when you request a new place to land at a space station. Which link are we looking? Oh, this is the monthly report. If you want to access it, there you go in chat. 220 players on the server you're playing in live right now? I don't know. That doesn't sound right. You're not doing 220 with gear down. I disagree. I like to put the, my gear down as I'm flying into the city and then slow down right outside the pad instead of flying to the place and then slowing down. And I, I understand making things easier for players who are new, but you absolutely... I think anybody who is comfortable flying wants to be able to get a little bit faster with their gear down. Um, no, you don't have to land at speed. 
<laughs> you can still fly with your gear down and, and not be landing. It's there's a there's a very big difference between the landing and the approach of the landing. And a lot of people want to lower their gear as they're approaching the land without first slowing down. Nav is going to kill the game, especially since Yogi said Nav flight will become the default flight mode. I think Nav is very good for the game. Maybe figuring out how to better implement it so it's intuitive, yeah. But um, it's 100% it's like we need to have a mode that is dedicated just to peaceful navigation of the game. It's very good for indicating what players are up to. Hit that button as you're coming in. It it doesn't really work um, because I still want to be flying in. Here's the deal. I'm advocating for there being a choice between fixing your speed when you're landing, when your gear's down, and not switch uh, doing that. CIG is in the kind of agreement, I think, because they said that it's going to be a choice. I think that's the way to go. I'm not saying that you guys need to fly fast to land. I just think it should be a choice, you know? Star Citizen's about choice and consequence. If somebody wants to fly in too fast and break their landing gear, let them do it. Make them learn. That's how we got here, right? Since the first time changing, since the PU launched, move default binding to enable quantum drive to left mouse button. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Uh, let's see, where were we on? Additionally, work began, oh, okay. For radar and scanning, the team updated radar zone queries to use the new zone query time splice tech to improve performance. Additionally, work began on signature categories, which allow the team to apply different signature detections based on emitters. This can be used to independently detect components on a ship with higher emissions. For example, thrusters compared to offline shield generators. Again, huge stealth details. That's This is basically saying, hey, you want to fly through a space undetected, get up to speed, shut down all your components, and fly dark. And, and somebody who's scanning via EM or IR might not even see you, and you could be a couple hundred kilometers away, or a couple dozen kilometers away. This is, this is getting very cool. I love the details that are going into how components work and how they operate with ships. It's a little stealthy. <laughs> no f***ing pun intended. It's a little stealthy how they're talking about these stealth improvements, but I bet this is going to be a topic in um, Inside Star Citizen Laser later this, this year. Losing points on Hybrid V Audio's Rate Your Landing series. Hey, I bet that man would, would agree with me on the, on the limits of speed. The best, and, and Jack Axton too, the best landings are the ones that you likely don't run or walk away from. Why do they introduce lower speed with LG down? It's, it's probably to help newer players. It's to make flight a little bit easier, which is an interesting choice because it's just going to get harder with control surfaces. May not come in Q2. That's okay. In Elite Dangerous, once you land in your lower your landing gear your speed is reduced it would be a fail safe which makes sense it does make sense but again i don't think it should be forced elite dangerous is one game and i think they do some stuff okay but i think star citizen being a place where choice is prevalent is pretty good for the players best way they can make nav and quantum work well is they tie quantum to your nav speed so you must start nav and accelerate to enter quantum oh hmm Every new player tends to explode <laughs> when they hit the hangar. Truth. But like maybe CIG needs to teach the, the, the velocity limiter better. In real life, you would gear down once you're below 250 knots. But what if you're in vacuum? No wind resistance. Nothing to rip off your gear if you're flying fast. Is master modes really easier for new players? I think so. Yeah. I think it makes it more enjoyable for new players. Axon has mastered the art of landings. Good man with those backflips.
when you enter QT, you will be able to manually stabilize the bubble. That's what they're doing. Right. Yeah, we haven't even seen that yet. Elite was all about choice. If people want to want to speed with landing gear down, they should be able to. Yes. That's what. Should I should I look up? Hold on. I bet you I could look up in this video. Choice and consequence. And see if it comes up at all. That's not that's not my uh, oh, choice and consequence, literally. Um, that's not my philosophy. I'm, I'm telling you what Star Citizen has done. They're general like they literally removed hover mode because it forced people to do something for speeds. They're very much a company that wants to give you the choice of doing things in this game and then suffer for them. You want to go into atmospheric flight? You better buy a ship with VTOL. It's going to help you. You want to go into a planet that has hot temperatures? You should bring some temperature resistant armor. They're not going to put an invisible wall in front of your ship if you try to go off your ship without the armor that fits that temperature because they want people to be able to make those kinds of choices. So having that sort of choice in the game just goes along with the idea of this game. And somebody already said in chat, Yogi has come out and said that they want to make it a choice. I don't, I don't know what the argument is here, folks. Additionally, work began on, oh, sorry. Support was also provided on for the item port editor tool with a refactor of default item loadouts, including defining them directly in the item port parameters within the item port container in data core. I don't know what that means, item ports. Additionally, the team supported the, the restoration of several core analytics and the reporting of additional key information to better understand player activity across the game. Landing gear should be redressed with the MFD rework where you can disable it. Yeah, that's what they're saying. Regular planes have speed limits for flying with gear down. Otherwise, it would rip off and might affect flight behavior. Again, we're flying nom, in nom, space, nom, folks. Nom, 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 nom. We need to be able to fly in space with stuff that's not wind resisted. You've been doing mole, mole solo mining since 320. 85% of Magda's rocks turned to iron. Everything combined with iron, it means base building 1.0 is coming with crafting iron <laughs> end of the year with galaxy base module concept sale. You know, I think. I think. That was the first patch that we even got iron. <laughs> they might have gone a little hefty with it. But yeah, iron is definitely um, included for crafting. I think they actually, when, when they first brought out that change, they said it was kind of a change getting ready for crafting coming in. We're doing World War II dogfighting in space. Realism is not a thing. Yeah. For Arena Commander, focus was closing Focus was on closing out deliverables for Alpha 323, most notably custom lobbies and the initial selection of custom settings. Gameplay features then continued to improve the multi-crew experience by adding access selection. Now, rather than either having multi-crew enabled or disabled, players can choose to enable the feature for friends and or squad members only. Probably good. That's probably a good idea. <laughs> so you don't have people coming in and just engineering your ship to hell. Engineering refactored the team balancing system, removing layers of complexity that they had experimented with for Alpha 321 and 322. Oh, I see. No, never mind. This is for Arena Commander. The new system has a simple balancing logic that prioritizes keeping squads together. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my god, I feel like we get separated every match. A short delay has been added before balancing to allow for more players to connect. We still were in the PTU when we were trying. Uh, the teams were hard to get to work correctly. The team also improved loadout definitions, allowing them to create and edit slots for differing different ammo types, including consumables and utility ammo. They also created a variant of the salvage and repair multi-tool with, with filled canisters for use in the engineering experimental modes. Um, this didn't really work for us when we were trying it, but I, I see where they're going with it. This work also allows players to use their PU characters in Arena Commander, Players who have had a customized character will now utilize that rather than the default actor previously used. Thank God I can have my beautiful face in Arena Commander where I never see it. <laughs> Some folks need to have a Coke and a smile. Things are changing and will continue to change. Relax, flow with it. 
then go nuts when the final version of everything is in. I think I had like a Coke somewhere around here. No smiles here though, Vastin. When you switch between nav and SCM, you would physically melt with the bubble then. <laughs> it does really slow you down. Yeah. It's probably the worst part of it is the way that it just puts a speed limit on you for no reason. That's like very hover mode, very hover mode behavior, Star Citizen. Not a fan, but I, I wish they had included that with engineering, but uh, I get how long that would have taken. Okay, they worked on the engineering experimental mode with some UI work. Finally, the devs supported a new system for gun rush, allowing them to have multiple weapons lists that can be toggled on and off throughout a patch cycle. This provides more variety and the ability to test new weapon sets without waiting for a new patch. Yay! Gun rush is pretty fun. Once the game can run at better than 20 frames per second in the arena commander for me, I will, I will check it out. Yeah, the crazy high acceleration is a problem. Um. March saw progress on reputation-based hostility, with the team fixing several issues with the new reputation system. Changes were also made to the trespass behavior. Now all factions will defend a trespass zone if it's owned by them, and factions with the appropriate settings will also be able to defend allied trespass zones. I didn't get to test this out, but we were at the distribution center, and they did kind of just shoot me. Rude. I wasn't even bad. I didn't even have a bad reputation. Let me see if I can find an interesting what they have to say about reputation because they got cool plans for this. I always forget not to use this profile when I'm doing the YouTube stuff. Here we go. The difference with an organization is that they can have several career scopes. Look at all these reputations I have at max. Look at what I'm able to maintain, all that. We're darn excited about how that's going to play out potentially. So for this release, a lot of our focus is around missions and how that's going to be affecting things like your affinity and confidence. But going forward, you'll be having actions that affect your reputation of other kinds. So that's going to be things like a mission giver where you might push them, but it also could be like if you shoot at them or if you shove one of their friends or if you talk to them in the wrong way. If you choose a bad choice in a conversation tree, it could be any number of things. Um, we even have so, talked about some fun stuff where, like, Constantine Herson, for instance, is a bit of a snob. You walk in wearing a bad coat or, like, some weird clothes, he might think less of you. You can also key it off of things like when you happen to raid um, a ship that is controlled by maybe Crusader security. That's, that's a pretty important one that people miss when they talk about, you know, you're not going to wear your helmet, or you're going to be wearing a helmet all the time. You don't need to customize your character. Some people won't talk to you or might not give you the mission if you're wearing a spacesuit. You might want to actually switch into something that makes sense to go see them in. I'll let them say that again. Some fun stuff where like Constantine Herson, for instance, is a bit of a snob. You walk in wearing a bad coat or like some weird clothes, he might think less of you. You can also key it off of things like when you happen to raid um, a ship that is controlled by maybe Crusader security. We could key it off of something like you go into the wrong area. I mean, you just walk into a club where the bouncer doesn't want you to be there. We could key it off of you having the wrong decal on your ship or flying in a way that a person doesn't really think that you're flying in a cool way, essentially. It's very open-ended. One of the things that we're really looking forward to is giving flavor to organizations by essentially playing with what they like and don't like. So there might be an organization that really likes it when you go around PvPing and killing other players. There might be organizations that frown on that a little bit. There might be organizations that really, really like it when you do piracy or smuggling or illegal acts. And there might also be some that aren't so okay with that. And that feel is going to allow us to bring a lot of the lore that up until now has existed on a website into the game so that you guys can actually experience it and get to know these people in the universe. Still mostly on a website. Like, most people don't know what we were even doing during the Overdrive initiative, so they need to work on this, but it is a goal. It's from 2021, a few years back when the reputation was first coming into the game. But yeah, they're gonna, there's going to be a lot kind of built into the idea of how they see you and perceive you uh, based on what you do.
Okay, for the Moby Glass, work continued on the redesigned contract manager. Last month's work included adding a button to read or unread mission info and a toggle to switch between legal and illegal missions. I liked the idea somebody mentioned in chat here of having to go through a process of um, having to go through a process of getting access to illegal missions rather than just popping up on your Moby Glass by default. And I like that a lot more. Maybe giving players immediate looks at illegal missions isn't the best idea gameplay wise and maybe it doesn't make the most sense lore wise but i'm i'm sure you know they want to make sure that there is like this starter i don't know i i think there could be there they could do a very cool legal mission that turns into an illegal mission that ends up with you getting access to more illegal missions because you don't want to lock people out of having a an illegal handholdy step into that world it just feels weird having it be the first thing you see when you open your official, I don't know, government approved communications device. How many of those things are in three years later? How many of what things are in? Oh, the reputation stuff? Uh, the reputation as a whole is in the game. It works how he said. I mean, the hostility just came in, but in terms of getting reputation with certain orgs and people... Uh, we've been able to do it since, I think, 2021, 20, March. I want to say March. Oh, I just hit the wrong button. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> um, August 2020, April 2021. Yeah, reputation came in. So anything that was in the mission contract manager would affect your reputation. This is kind of how people are getting rewards for certain types of missions and stuff. Let me close the window. I'm sorry. Yum, 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 yum. Oy. But yeah, it's 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 all in the game three years later. And we're getting a little bit of an update to it in 323, which is what they're talking about here. Do, 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 do. Where were we? For the Moby Glass, we already went over that. The team then made journal compatible with the new Moby Glass and updated the home screen, including added visuals for recent notifications, active missions, and the player's current jurisdiction and crime stat level. I dig the Moby Glass functionally wise. I feel like it's a little bit. A little bit not exactly the kind of like it's not it's not my favorite design style um but you know i see i see the direction they're going in and it's consistent that's all if it's consistent and it works i'm down for it so this is the new home screen they're talking about you can see they've got the notifications here contracts the health screen a new dedicated health screen as well and I think it's consistent, it's informative, it's functional, it's cool. Design-wise, it might not be my favorite, but I could care less, man. As long as it, it fits the game and it works and it does what they want it to do, I'm down for it. You want illegal missions to be a thing, but you want there to be real consequences for crime stats. Like getting pew-pewed by Hurston. <laughs> there he is. Am I a if Space Tomato a play on Space Cutlet? No. No, I have been going by the tomato moniker since 2011, 2012. Um, I just added space in front of it at some point, and it became more spacey. Yogi and his team developed a completely new flight model behind closed doors, and now they're all surprised at the feedback. I don't think it was behind closed doors per se they were they they talked about it quite a bit earlier on i guess it's been what a year and a half since they talked about it certainly very blue yeah is the uh is the master modes conversation really that bad i feel like it's like 20% bad, 80% meh to, oh, it's, it's okay. Spaced tomato. K 
care less about the style and way more about the legibility of the text and accessibility. Indeed. Yeah, the reputation changes in, v in, in 323 are really good. They have to make everything work for consoles. Yikes, not on the PU. Maybe for Squadron, but like, I don't think Star Citizen needs to be working for consoles. It should, it should support controllers, like people who are playing with controllers, but console support for an MMO sounds like a hell. Reddit and Spectrum are having, they don't like master modes. I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I need to try it out more myself. I think it's, uh, it's an interesting change. I don't like the forced restrictions that it puts on speeds and stuff, but I do like the, I like the idea behind it. And I did bring this up with Yogi on the podcast that a couple of years ago, if I can find it here. They did try to do this. Excuse me. Was it the same patch as Reputation? 3.15? No. Where the heck was this? Here we go. 3.12. Um, they added in... No, is it still not here? 3.11? Thirteen. I could have sworn it was somewhere around here. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Now we're too new now. Is it all the way back in 310 time? Yeah, it is. Wow, that's long. Okay. So here's some updated targeting methodology. And also this high-speed combat change. This was a big one. Ship systems will suffer the strains of traveling at high speeds with maximum velocity, resulting in the restriction of some player options in the cockpit, creating a vulnerability that will push players into engagement at lower speeds. This was a very, in my opinion, lackadaisical attempt at getting players to fight at lower speeds. They actively acknowledged that it was a problem, how fast people were flying. They couldn't see each other flying past each other too quickly and things were not as fun. So they tried to throw this in as a gameplay focused change that would induce people to fly slower. And it did not work. Um, that was four years ago. That's part of why they started developing Master Boats, because in the PU, people say it is a Squadron 42 focus change, but I'm pretty sure in that same podcast, Yogi told us this system started in the PU. And I think a lot, a lot of it is because this feature failed. And so over the next three years of that time, they developed master modes as a new way to try and make combat slower because the, the, they couldn't force the players to learn. They needed to make combat slower, and this is how they're choosing to do it. Internet is incapable of nuanced opinions. Everything has to be either perfect or the worst thing ever. Yeah, it can be a lot. But I feel like you saying that is probably the worst thing ever. So, you know. <laughs> it's more fun to watch combat now? Well, good for me since I rarely ever actually take part in it. Just like the speed limiter exists, but no one uses it, they fly by you at 1200 while you're stationary, then type, type, type stop jousting. <laughs> yeah, they've talked about working the star, the flight model a lot ever since they got rid of cruise. Improved, improved debug tools were added to a cargo hauling, to cargo hauling missions too, such as the ability to debug complete parts of the, of the hauling order to simulate collecting or delivering freight elevators. Search or March saw progress on hangars, including the instance interior manager that handles instance logic and reserves gateways for transitioning between the outside world and hangar. Now players calling an elevator or retrieving a ship in supported locations will create an instanced hangar that the transit, air traffic control, and law systems correctly respond to. This is again more of that instancing technology in the background. Improvements were also made to the freight elevator kiosk, including the layout, branding, tooltips, delivery screen, and platform handling. 
The devs are currently integrating the kiosk with the personal inventory framework. The item bank is now functional and correctly uses the storage locker and updated delivery slash selection logic. And improvements were made to the warehouse system to support missions too. All this going into freight elevators and personal hangers and basically the, one of the biggest parts of 323. For the commodity kiosk, updates were made to the design along with the packing behavior and auto-loading display. Support was given to the lighting and VFX content teams towards shiploading platforms too. Solid. It's good updates from the game, the core gameplay segment. Let's talk about economy though. Last month, the economy team continued rebalancing commodities, making sure they have a scalable algorithm that will work with other systems like crafting. Mission rewards are being rebalanced according to the difficulty and time required to complete them. As part of this, the team are working to better understand how much effort and time is required to perform specific activities in game. In-game pricing is currently underway for new Harvestable and Hangar Flare 2. Hangar Flare! Cosmetics, the economy is coming together. I think I'm going to make a video about this before 323 because it's a bit of a stealthy addition to 323 how much of the economy they're balancing now. Economy are currently involved in the design of reputation and org progression and are starting to balance the time and cost of auto-loading freight elevators. They also provided support for cargo missions. Finally, a comprehensive list of all intended resource and source Resource sources, terraformer, transformers, and sinks were created to help ensure the economy is stable for the long haul. Resource sources, transformers, and sinks. You know what this sounds like? Y'all know what that sounds like? You know. Don't tell me you don't know. Where's Gumbo? I'm pretty sure Gumbo is our resident. Where is Tony? <laughs> Standard MMO. Something like it. It sounds like some of this stuff here. Now it requires zero Laronite. We're going to change that to two. And what we're going to very quickly see here is that we're going to start getting some Laronite flowing to the Hurston factory so that the power plants can continue to be created. Transformers, producers, and sinks. And that's, that's, that, that's, that loop, that's that loop of guys right there. That's what they're taking. Um, now, one of the important things here is that the... Let's go ahead and look at the Hurston aluminum. factory aluminum now what wound up happening there is it was very low for a period of time and that's because they were actually burning off that aluminum inventory as fast as they could get it and the reason why you see that spike there in the aluminum inventory is because as soon as we altered the formula so that power plants now require laronite they were still receiving from all these freight, freight, freight or transports, they still had aluminum coming in, but they could no longer produce power plants. So it stalled, and then all of a sudden they started stockpiling, stockpiling. And then when you see that the aluminum started falling, that's because finally the, the, they started receiving supplies of laronite, and they were able to resume the production process, and so all of a sudden their aluminum started getting burned off at a natural rate. So now we're going to add a bit more Laronite out in the asteroid fields, and Jake's going to handle that via macro. So they're basically they're showing off that you got R Corp, which is a shop. You got a, a Damar refinery, a Crusader refinery. These are examples of transformers, I think. A shop is an example of a sink. A Delamar mine is an example of a producer. So when I read this in the monthly report, I'm reading, they're getting together a list of all intended resource sources, transformers, and sinks. These are all of the refineries, the space stations, the shops, um, the outposts, the mining claims, every place in Stanton, and probably Pyro too, that creates all this stuff is basically getting tabulated. 
so that they can start to maybe not even start to maybe just continue to get it all organized so that when the quantum simulation actually can run and has the the scale to do so it just plugs in that data right here like this that's the hope that's not i'm reading between the lines here this isn't anything from cig themselves but it does sound like some of the more important economy stuff we've been waiting for in terms of supply and demand and dynamically changing things based on what's actually happening in the verse really cool to see we're going to keep a close eye on the economy segment over the next few months because this might be a 4.0 targeted thing they're working on graphics vfx programming and planet tech throughout march much of the department's focus was on bug fixing the various de deliverables for alpha 323 performance scaling options were added to the water simulation to ensure it can scale to all hardware while various improvements were made to water boundary shading and visor wetness to achieve a seamless effect as players enter water. Gotta get that visor wetness for the real game effect. Support for distanced field collisions were, was also completed for more accurate collisions from vehicles. The Vulcan team worked through several performance issues as they moved closer to matching D3D performance. Uh, they had to say, this precedes the enabling of multi-threading for the next release to hopefully smash D3D performance levels on the CPU. The GPU performance should remain similar. However, some performance issues currently remain, so depending on the location and context, players may see worse performance, hence the beta label on Vulkan. But the aim is for us to, to get widespread testing in Alpha 323 so that we can enable Vulkan by default in the following release. That's what we're seeing right now with the Evocati update coming later today. They are enabling Vulcan in the game so that you can use it, but they won't be making it mandatory, or not mandatory, they won't be making it a default Welcome rendering everybody. system Thank in the game in. until this the next release, probably 3.24 or 4.0. Goslaw, Thank you for the members over there on YouTube. Much love. Appreciate you. And Sigelian bringing in the pizza raid. Welcome, folks. Hello. Hello, everybody. Good to see you. Thank you for coming in, Sigelian. Thanks for the raid. If we get a shout out for the guy. Appreciate you, buddy. Um, guys, I love the videos. Uh, thank you so much for the support. You make them possible. Give Segelian a follow, folks. If you haven't, does a lot more industrial kind of gameplay than I do. He does uh, mining and refueling when it does work. And he also is a pretty good cook, from what I hear. Today, he was doing some Kerbal Space, it looks like. That sounds like fun. Is that game running well now? Did they get that all figured out? How do I feel about hauling? Should it be live? Finally go pick up stuff and hope you can sell it or more like how it works in real life. You take a contract to deliver an amount from point A to point B. I think it should be both Chicky in the basket. And that's actually what their plans are from what I've seen. They want to do both, both missions where you're just taking a contract with no risk and the ability to buy and sell and time the market. I have a video coming out about that tomorrow. Alongside the Vulcan renderer, the team are currently reworking shaders to reduce the total number of PSOs that need compiling when the game starts. Work on global illumination also continued with a focus on performance as the team moved toward an internal rollout of the first version for testing by the art teams. Global illumination is coming along this year. We're about to get upscaling, the Vulcan renderer, global illumination, and possibly even frame interpolation all within a year of each other. The optimizations. Mmm. Yummy. Not to say that the game's just magically going to run better, but like, those are pretty big steps in the optimization realm if if I know any better. I don't know better, so, you know, somebody else in chat may want to confirm. The Planet Tech team started working on Planet Tech V5, with initial focus on the groundwork required to set up spatial partitioning. They're currently deciding how this will work with server meshing and server crash recovery. The devs also introduced the concept of default planets for the internal editor so that it's trivial for anyone to create and use a planet for testing. Man, I can't believe they didn't have that already. Um, they're not talking about the shiny parts of Planet Tech V5 yet, and I'm wondering what they are. They keep talking about more the angle of, this is going to help us make planets better. Yes, but how will it make them shinier and flat? Before this, before this uh, stream, me and Mrs. Tomato rewatched that clip from the documentary, I think it's called Behind the Curve or something like that, where the, the people are the flat earth convention, the flat earth whole thing. And the guy is like trying to prove that earth is flat and he does the experiment. And at the end of the experiment, 
it doesn't work and it proves that the earth is round and his response is just interesting <laughs> yeah dude it is pretty interesting that it's like the entire thing that every human has ever lived on in all of history is actually a ball <laughs> it's a good clip um Sorry for anybody who, who believes the earth is flat. I don't mean to offend you, but honestly, I kind of do. Because, like, why do you think that? Oh, man. Okay, let's get back to this space game where the planet's around. On the VFX programming side, in addition to water improvements, the team continued with networking support for the fire simulation. They're also making changes to the augmented reality render layer to enable support for holographic lenses or weapons. Sorry. So water and fire. That's good fun. Fire is going to be an interesting one on these ships. Muzzle flashes, projectiles, enemies, and impacts all getting holographic support. CIG should make a flat planet for the meme. They actually did. Star Citizen, uh, they've been doing the, the April Fools for a while. One of them was, was nice. actually the Got first nice Planet Tech V5. Nice. And they literally were like, we're changing the planets to, to be flat. Here's Yella. <laughs> Oh, God. There's our corp. Looks beautiful flat. Just a, a disc with a whole bunch of cities on it. But yeah, it would be funny if they actually released one in engine. <laughs> 23 feet deep, 17 feet deep clip. It's iconic. It really is. It's so funny. You see them discussing it when they prove it was round with another more advanced method and they decided to not tell the others. <laughs> keep your arms and legs inside until this ride comes to a full and complete stop. Oh God, keep your arms and legs inside. Thank you. That's funny. That is good. Hey, you know what? You believe it. You believe it drives you. If it gets you to work, gets you out of bed in the morning. Believe it. Just don't, <laughs> don't make any rash decisions based on that. You believe rations are gross. <laughs> We won't get into that conversation, Mrs. T. Um, in-game branding. The in-game branding and locations teams work together on Invictus launch week with work approaching completion. The branding work for cargo containers and additional signage for various locations is also nearly finished. In interactables last month, item banks now called gear storage were finished, including a heavily worn version for Grimhex. They were then placed around the verse for convenient access. Pictures aren't loading again. Don't do this to us. Only reason I believe Earth is not flat is because somebody told me. I, 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 I studied it. <laughs> like, I guess, yes, because someone told me, but the, the telling was based on a scientific principle of how gravity works, and it doesn't make sense if these things are flat. <laughs> like, scientifically, gravity wouldn't form planets into flat surfaces. It's not, that's not... <laughs> I don't need somebody to tell me that that's the truth. That's just how gravity works. Unless we can find stars that are flat. You know, gravity breaks at certain levels. Hey, man, if you can fly and find flat stars, we can start talking. I'm, I'm down for it. But like science, science, the scientific method is about going based on what's been proven by science until it's disproven. And then you have to change your hypothesis and change what you believe. I have not seen anything that scientifically can lead me to believe that the surface we live on is flat. Everything I've seen has shown me otherwise, including my own eyes, including the science, the math, history. So like, <laughs> I don't, I'm not even gonna have the conversation to be honest. Let's move on to locations. Last month, saw the locations team polishing content for Alpha 4.0. They also closed out the upcoming distribution centers, adding content and quality to give players the best possible experience on launch. They also kicked off pre-production for new mandates, officially beginning in Q2. Yay! I love new mandates. We get to hear about these next, next quarter and month reports. The Landing Zone team finalized art for instanced hangars and prepared them for implementation across the verse. That's, we've, we've been hearing about that. Eyeballs, moist eyeballs. Why are we talking about science? What are we doing, man? All we care about here is the science of how fast a JPEG can raise money. 
All right, mission design. This is where, this is actually, I think, a new one. Yeah, mission feature team was restructured. So this is where we get to hear about some, uh, some good fun. Oh boy. Moist, moist milk, really? <laughs> Gross. Sick. This is cargo stuff. This is good. Last month, the mission feature team was restructured, becoming the mission design team. Despite the name change, the team will continue to build scalable modular content for the PU. It's like, dis despite their not having features in the name anymore, there are still features involved, believe it or not. Following feedback on the Overdrive Initiative event, the team is revisiting, revisiting the standard data heist missions. Currently, these missions are locked to a single player who can then share the mission with their friends, which causes a bottleneck for the missions and locations. In response, the team are trialing a change that will allow a singular version of the mission to be accepted by four players who will play together as contractors. This is an effort to free up missions and locations and create a similar effect to, to Overdrive Initiative, where people who usually play solo are part of a team, potentially building friendships and enhancing the MMO feeling. <laughs> this will be after after reputation does a better job of making sure people don't just shoot each other. <laughs> I mean, I guess if you have negative rec, you're not going to get these these missions. Actually, wait a second. The data heist mission, isn't that an illegal mission? So, like, are you trying to pair up a bunch of people who naturally like shooting folks into parties in which they're not supposed to shoot folks? Because... Mm, I don't know. Someone told someone told you if you shoot yourself you'll die and you're supposed to challenge that. Hey man, you you can prove that without doing it. Wish they would instead make a group finder. Ooh, I think I think a a, a some kind of a board in space stations or, or major locations where you can like put your name down and then if somebody else clicks on it it sends you a thing and then you guys can get grouped up would be good. Starting missions like this, it gives me early visions of Destiny, which could be something that works today. But I mean, even like they're doing this and they're still not getting the VOIP system to be reliable. We need a VOIP system that works. If you're going to start grouping together random players on purpose, we got to be able to talk to each other. That's. Man, they got to get around to that. Work, pro work progressed on the upcoming cargo hauling missions with players being tasked with hauling tracked goods from one location to another as requested by a shipping company, with a consistent payout of roughly 20% of the cargo's value. A hauler's income will be more stable than that of a commodity trader who buys low and sells high as the market fluctuates. Still, once a cargo hauler gets comfortable with the professions, they might try their luck at community trading. So one of you had mentioned this, uh, somebody was asking about this. How, how are they going to do it? Are they going to force you to always buy the cargo and then ship it? Or are they going to let you take a contract that has you working for a company? The contracts are how you're going to build up your reputation, get more advanced missions, get specific trade routes that send you on specific missions. I just said that. The trader version of this is going to be about buying a material, right? This is literally what we were just watching in this video. Buying a material at a certain place waiting for that price to maybe spike or for that stuff to become more valuable and then selling it off at a different place when you realize that they're going to pay more for it. That's where those commodity price changes in the Moby Glass started out. That was kind of their first version of trying to get that going. They want to apply that to all these locations they're talking about. So there's going to be a lot going into, into the cargo hauling profession. And uh, like I said, I'll have a video coming out about that tomorrow. If your mind is not open to the possibility of the current paradigm being incorrect, then you're not scientific. Bro, I am. My mind is always open to things changing. Nobody's changed it. Only time you heard someone try to use VOIP was someone talking, <laughs> talking shit about how they would take any armor the moment you undock. Wasn't <laughs> exactly worthwhile hearing any of it. That's fair. Some people are not fun to listen to talk. While the player is legally allowed to transport the goods, this is talking about those commodity trading missions you could get 
assigned to you. This is actually the coolest part, in my opinion. While the player is legally allowed to transport those goods, they don't actually own them, right? You're just getting paid to transport. As a result, lawful stores across Stanton won't even buy those commodities if you try and take them and sell them somewhere else. To sell the to sell this shipment rather than delivering it, the player must navigate to a fence. So now these are different kinds of contacts in different places in the game. A no questions asked shop, often located in an unmonitored space of Stanton. However, due to its tracked nature, this cargo fetches a significantly lower price than original or ordinary sandbox commodities. And this will apply across different star systems and stuff too. So this is a big detail in the cargo hauling profession that's saying, even if you decide to take a contract, right, you sign up with an NPC organization and you're basically just running a standard mission. At any point during that mission, maybe you'll get an offer, not even just from an NPC. Maybe a player will approach you and say, hey, if you transport, if you transfer all that stuff out of your shipping into mine, because, right, we've got the physical transportation. This isn't just like some kind of value that gets placed to your ship and then you take that to, to another space station and then your ship magically transports the cargo. These are cargo boxes physically put on your ship that at any point you could take, give to another player, and they could go sell it. Now, this can kind of move into the realms of fraud. And I also think there are there are considerations to make here, like can you transport it to a third party place and then have your friend pick it up and continue that transport to the place where the mission is assigned to? Or is that cargo always going to be assigned to your ship? Like there's a lot of permissions questions I have about this stuff, but it opens up the game a ton when you can just kind of break into a mission and finish it out in a different way than, than what they had planned. So I look forward to seeing how that works with the sandbox gameplay and what they decide to do there, but it's a lot. With the upcoming addition of Wildlife to the PU, Mission Design began working on related content, building three mission variants. There's the kill X amount of animals, I guess. This extermination population control mission tasks players with killing a predetermined amount of animals on a planet. So you could just fly around your Cutlass helicopter style sniping these animals from the sky in different biomes. There's also clear location, which will require you to go to a specific location that requires having its animal population dealt with. Then there's kill and collect, requiring you to go to first, uh, re basically the first resource collection mission type where players must locate animals and collect their resources, which is preferably not poop. Mission sharing, yeah. They could accept the cargo. There has got to be some kind of like permission transfer system, right? For whatever is in your manifest. Anything removed from a ship's manifesto registered to the captain is stolen goods and not valued at the mission transfer promised pay rate. Yeah, maybe if you get somebody else involved, that voids your contract. Snatched a few copion horns. Selling demand should be on a curve. A location that buys gold will always buy gold. They will just offer a higher or lower price depending on if they need it or not. In this video, they showed us there was a situation where they said it reached capacity and they just stopped accepting that stuff. Or rather, they, yeah, they reached capacity and start, started stockpiling. Actually, maybe that's what he was saying. They'll always stockpile, but they'll pay you pennies. Hopefully they don't run out of storage, storage space. Following a recent hire, some older mission modules were refactored. As such, the Destroy Illegal Satellites mission received a small facelift. That's good. Wonder what that is. Following further testing of Blockade Runner, a small change was made to ensure that events stay fun and engaging for all players. Work on the Xenothreat Global events continued too, alongside freight elevators. Narrative. Last month, Narrative continued to work closely with design to support a variety of content. From revising existing missions like the new player experience to outlining new missions being developed to support upcoming gameplay. The team continued to iterate on future narrative initiatives designed to bring more characters and stories to the verse. This resulted in a series of proposals that they've been reviewing with design. They also continued to outline ways to improve AI behaviors to sell more on the Star Citizen lore. Narrative also met with some of the gameplay teams to talk over the lorification of upcoming systems. Their 
they're starting to dip a lot more into the narrative stuff, which is great because as you can see from the current event that's going on, narrative, it doesn't do the best job like in the game. There's so much lore in this game that you just don't even get to really know about because it's all hidden behind narrative stuff. Um, but even just looking at their, their recent talks here about branding, um, clearly they're trying to get more into selling the places. Definitely, like, look at... They're just applying a lot more to the actual areas. And they came in... Um, and to the narratives, the missions and stuff. We just need more voice acting. We need more presence. We need more stuff that convinces people that they're actually taking part in a game, in a universe, rather than just marking some boxes on a list, you know? Here's what they're saying, though. ...really developed, like, all the layers that you need for it to feel real. That was something that, uh, you know, is very rich and is extremely fun to bring forward with the visuals and the branding. And at that point, it's it's more than branding. It becomes like storytelling, basically, right? You're telling a story through all the elements that you're putting on the walls and in the environment that help sell the lore and, again, augment immersion and the experience for the player. Defining the factions that we found in, like, in Checkmate Station by the, the, the Rough and Ready was a lot of fun creating that the identity of a faction a gang right um in space in 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 a derelict abandoned station in the middle of nowhere i think you really get a vibe when you when you get there when you enter the the zone like you, right away you know it's it's rough and ready they, they made the logo like a big sculpture so i thought this was pretty cool from like where it started to where it's at now i think the graffiti and the sculpture does it mostly had the opportunity to work with the character team to define a little bit of the uh, tattoos that go in line with the direction that we had, you know, for the type of faction we wanted this, this gang to look like. I started the brainstorm around tattoos, which were all uh, bringing a bit of, like, uh, violence and of contrast right. on parts. Kind of the just of the sell design. sort of what they're doing with branding. You can also see it back here. They talk about like how the ships, the manufacturers are all starting to get more into their categories and what they're supposed to look like. So a history of the brand, basically. A little bit what they're about, uh, a tagline. So this is where, you know, we're collaborating with the narrative team to to come up with these uh, the information for this. And then that is the first, the, the, the starting point. That's all part of the, uh, the brand style guide. A style guide is for everyone to really get to understand the company. And we you try to keep it simple, but you put all the elements you need, like the logos, the colors, you're allowed to use the typography that goes with that company, even shapes. Every company has colors. If the primary color is blue, let's say you can't, you can't go out and do like branding for that company or make it like red, you know? So we're all trying to like tie everything together to make sure everybody's on the same page. Now this kind of sounds like they're just starting this. They did do this for a while. They, I don't. I just don't think they had it. I think a lot of the full company organization is only just coming together over the last several years or the last few years because a lot of the time they just haven't even had enough people on the teams in the PU to to put the extra work towards the stuff. A lot of their effort went towards Squadron Forty Two, and before and I guess during that too, a lot of the effort was just about building the game, the base of the game. The, the engine itself, the technology that drives it. And that's where we're starting to see a little bit more focus on narrative and branding in the game itself, finally. I hope that continues and it speeds up too, because definitely need more back, backdrop. Um, online technology team said, in March, the online services team worked towards refactoring the social services backend. This involves porting the services to gRPC, as well as making updates for server meshing. The team are currently working to reduce a EAC anti-cheat false positives in preparation of enabling sanction enforcement. Lastly, online services finished, uh, finished off long-term persistence work for the character customizer, enabling players to save their characters between patches. This is in 3.23. So, uh, a solid addition for sure. I think that's a big one for the character customizer. Environment can only tell so much of the story. Books and logs tell you more. Even mission info can say more. Yeah, some little things you can find throughout the uh, throughout the game really helps sell the space. Reshade bands. 
I hope not. I hope they stick with reshade working. R&D. In March, work continued on the temporal render mode. Render mode? Render node? Render mode. Tracking movement of objects moving through clouds was improved so that history can be rejected or kept as correctly as possible. A novel method was developed because typical disocclusion algorithms only work for opaque scenes. But the team wants uh, the team wants objects to fly through transparent clouds, be partially occluded by clouds and fog, and etc. The generation and blending of soft depth of soft depth for clouds and atmosphere was improved. Uh, this depth information is crucial to properly handling history rejection when moving through clouds. A lot of cloud cloud stuff going on here. It is the clouds look great, by the way. What we saw in the 323 PTU the other day when we turned on reference was. Holy crap, it was beautiful. And we were running at pretty good frames too for Star Citizen. I am the the looks of this game are taking a step up. It's it, it's funny because we've heard year after year how this game is not gonna look good when it releases, and year after year the engine team is able to continue to improve the graphics because they own the engine and uh, they're still working on it. So it's not like a big graphics overhaul like 3.0 i don't think they need that now but they are doing some of the more mature stuff like dlss and um fsr and their own tsr and a lot of the lighting stuff that's going on ray trace and global illumination they still have that that kind of stuff to get into the game the team also supported the gen 12 vulcan endeavor by analyzing the current lists of pipeline state objects used to render the game and suggested several ways to reduce it these suggestions are being worked on by the render team and will result in a short end shader pre-cache phase the first time players start the game. Yeah. Thank God. I hope they can get that to work in the launcher too. Tech design support supported various areas of development to prepare for Alpha 323 and beyond. This included item banks with the team making a, ne a new rundown variant entity, setting up state machines and animations and iterating on the main screen and player interaction points and flow. Hangers were supported alongside ship flight, including iteration on new AI behaviors to make them more responsive to player actions. Master modes received polish too. Support was given to QA for visual scripting automation and nodes were added for getting and setting player stats. For UI, player stats, I wonder what that means. For UI, tech design worked on test level setup and FPS crosshairs and hit markers, updating and polishing animations and fixing bugs. General bug fixing was also done and various tools and workflows received improvements. I hope you can make those those hit markers smaller because they are very large. Don't remember if I'm saying Aegis Next or Clockwise. Uh, Aegis Next for what? Manufacturer Tree claiming every developer was going to have their time allotted overhaul. Next year is RSI followed by Aegis Dynamics. I don't remember them saying that. That'd be fun though. Eve is old and has several graphics upgrades and still looks beautiful in places. Yeah, it, like the idea that the game is going to look old just because it started development at a certain point is annoying how much effort people can put into making it look good. Depends on where the money is, but like people are still re redoing Skyrim's graphics. Not at the base level, but in, in ways, you know, they're messing with it. Ooh, little sneeze. All right, UI section. Last month, the Montreal-based UI team worked closely with the core gameplay team and the UI teams on the new cargo gameplay updates. This effort encompasses the development of the new freight elevator kiosk, commodity kiosk, and item bank. They also began preparing mandates coming later this year, including the resource network and jump points. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The UK-based team focused on adding the new player-facing UI to the game, the new version of the movie glass was made fully functional in time to get player feedback with visual polish still ongoing, as we can see. The new visor and lens received visual improvement while the last functionality elements were ported over by the programming team. UI also continued to polish the new shopping UI and character customizer ready for release. Not the biggest fan of how the, character, the uh, shopping UI looks, but I do love the functionality of it and it, and it feels good to use. little sneeze <laughs> unique item recovery is still being delayed i don't know when it's coming though 
Do you think CIG will allow modding of this game? They've talked about it. I think there is a really, really good chance for them to do modding in private Arena Commander servers in the distant future. Not so sure about the Persistent Universe, though. That would complicate things a bit. On the VFX side of things, last month, the VFX team finished their work on distribution centers and freight elevators. They also completed tasks for several upcoming vehicles. Progress continued on jump point effects, including concepting based on new gameplay considerations that became apparent during testing. Hmm. So they are actively developing the gameplay around jump points, not just get into a jump point, fly to the other system and you're done. Like they're working on the gameplay elements, how to make it more interesting, how to really develop it out to make it um, not just a transition between servers, but a full on experience that's part of the game. The team took another look at water effects to coincide with the graphics team's plans to release some of the water improvements that were shown at CitizenCon. We are getting some of the water improvements, uh, but that does tell me that they've got more plans for it, which I think we could all imagine that. And that's the report. That is the report, my friends. This was a good one, in my opinion. A lot of little things here and there. The details on the cargo stuff. This is like the first details we've gotten on what's actually going on with cargo changes in 323. We know overall what they want to do, but this is the first time they've actually <laughs> put it down in writing. The ship news was fairly standard. Nothing too crazy. We know that the Zeus is getting worked on. Legionnaire is getting worked on. They didn't mention a lot of the other stuff that was going on last month, which includes like the Polaris and a couple of other unnamed things. One of which is most likely going to go straight to flyable during, during 323. We don't really know yet, but they've teased us a couple of things and I think it's pretty likely since there hasn't been anything about any ships yet this entire year so yeah that, that about wraps it up this was a good report though any favorites will there be a wipe in 323 we don't know yet but there are economy changes coming yes so there's a good chance that they will be wiping what do I think is the old RSI ship they're reworking I don't know I think the Constellation would be good for it, but the Aurora would also be nice since it is a starter ship. Void Dude! Hello, my friend. You're a little bit late. Just a little bit. It's okay, though. We appreciate you. How have you been, man? How's the game treating you? You been naming any ships? They are wiping. We are all wiping, Void Dude. Think we're going to get boats? We will. It's actually, it's on the roadmap. I mean, this is partially for Squadron 42, but boat parameters are here. This is all for Squadron 42. We saw a boat in Squadron 42, but I wouldn't be surprised if they add them to Star Citizen. 323 is awesome. Cannot wait for it to be more stable. Seriously, man, I'm loving it. I'm excited to see what it plays like when I don't crash out every two minutes. Use a bidet. Hey, por que no los dos coffee? Bidet and wipe. Okay. I did say that I was going to start with the server meshing video uh, that Asmongol did. I didn't get around to doing that on accident. So let's check that out here. For anybody who did come for the monthly report, though, thank you for checking it out. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I think we've got good stuff on the way. The updates are looking really good. And overall, like just in a lot of different segments of the game there's a lot of there's a lot of progress going on and um it's an exciting time to be at least interested in the development maybe the game itself isn't running in a way that you'd like it to but with so much changing there is a good chance that at least something's going to be interesting for you so i hope you got something out of that i hope it was an interesting read and listen to you and you enjoyed the ridiculous non-stop non uh non-related chatter and going off on tangents um, this is a video that came out last week. Oh God. It's, it's kind of like a, a mish mix mashed video of, to explain server meshing, but it, it, I guess kind of is based on the foundation of my video. So it has been like, it got linked to my video in the description. Uh, and he's a pretty big channel. So it's, it's been interesting to give you guys an idea actually of 
Normally reaction content doesn't really do much for a channel. It can do something if the channel is small and the channel doing the reaction is pretty big, uh, which is what happened here. So you can actually see the, the video was doing pretty much average for my normal videos. And then he reacted to it and it got a big, big bump. That's that's never happened before. Generally, because nobody the size of Adam and Gold has ever watched a video of mine. But uh, let's take a look because he says some stuff about server meshing. I've gone through the comments here and it is ridiculously positive. Um, people are very blown away by the technology, not even just the fact that it works, but like also just that it's happening, that, that it, it, it is a thing that people are trying to do. And it is kind of interesting, you know, to, to see, I think it's a combination of both server meshing has been proven in some regard in a closed environment and also people as well known as Asmongold are covering it. So it's leading to a combination of people being like, oh, wait, this is cool which we might see more of over the next couple of years. But let's check this out and um, <laughs> see what this is, and then we'll close out. This technology will change MMO games forever. What is it, a new microtransaction store? CIG is kind of like Tesla. Oh, God. It's arguable this is a tech company disguised as a I don't want to listen company. to this part. Oh, 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 guys, hey, 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 this is Star Citizen. Till now. Now they're getting more into the game. We've part, seen this before. Chat, though. Chat's popping off. Oh, that's a different video. Star Citizen oh, you guys can't even see it. Hold on. I'll let you see the whole screen. Word of tech systems that have taken a long time, a lot of money, see it. and some smart individuals to put together. Whenever they say a lot of money, they're talking about $700 million. Despite that, it runs <laughs> awfully a lot of the time. The entire game with it's millions true. of entities is always running on just a single server. Ooh. The most important goal has always been to change this, to split that one server into potentially dozens. Probably to share the load <laughs> oh, Wait, this chat. This person said Starfield, but more disappointing somehow. They just... Like, I hate all space games. To change this, to split that one server into potentially dozens. Probably to share idea. the load across populated locations and create an environment that can support hundreds in relatively close proximity. But from object container streaming to mm -hmm. entity bind culling, a 64-bit environment to gross. persistent entity okay. streaming, this ultimate goal of Star Citizen to actually become a large-scale MMO mm -hmm. is built on a stack of tech, culminating in what's known as server meshing. Hey, after s who's this? Who, who? Tomatoes Gang. Toast Gang was in the chat. Representing. Amanaplana C. I see you. <laughs> Drop the toast. Various technological efforts slowly building up the tech stack that makes this possible. Uh -huh. After needing to put off many other developments to wait for this moment, after constantly hearing that the main thing holding this game back is server meshing, <laughs> it appears it may actually be happening. But as you can see on my screen, I no longer have one server connected. I have three servers connected to this replication. All right, so they kind so of, they splice together it? different videos to give a, a, a dip, more continuous narrative, I think, of it actually working. Lee Bob, thank you for the, for the super chat, appreciate you. And Brain Damage, I see you in chat, that membership. To those server. servers, and we Ooh, said, okay, here we go. You can see that this is, even as nobody's as done they transition this into the before. other zone, Chat's already like, wait, hold on, that's amazing. <laughs> that was fast. Seamlessly transition to that yeah, zone. Not this seamless. Not at Holy this shit. So they don't have to load everything. Now, yeah, now I get it. I uh, holy shit. Fidelity, man. What the heck? It does help. It does help to be able to see it happening in person. But I guess this got missed even with all the CitizenCon buzz that was happening. Interact if it works, it's gonna be that are on the other side. What so the if I go fuck? On the screen zone, for example, and I shoot this. I can still shoot that. Don't worry, I got it. Fuck. Uh, entity. Oh, that's so got crazy. It. The replication layer tracks every change in any server and replicates that change to the central timeline of information so that any other server can simply... So it just sends the data of the XY coordinate of, like, I guess the thing going from one server to another. And because tech is so fast now, it's completely seamless. Reference that that's line. Isn't it? Man, it's crazy how this, like, how you, you, you feel crazy for freaking out about it for so long. And then, and then the, like, people start being like, wait a second, that's good. It's just, it's a little bit of whiplash. It's fucking data. insane. It also allows for any number of servers to crash. I got that sensor unlocked. Out the current position or progress of the player. 
Another server will just boot back up to take its place and reconnect to the replication layer like the game was there all along. Over oh the weekend, Star Citizen conducted one of the most important tech tests ever, massive scale server meshing. The server meshing test began with 200 players in the Stanton system and was then increased to 400 players uh -huh. and then later 800 players. All right. I want to see it. Yeah, this is a good this is a good summary of different videos to put that narrative together of like this is what it does. Now you can see it working in in real time. Did we just have a halt? Oh my god, I just have a halt. I'm hitting the button. Okay. Wait, did that go through the server at a slightly different angle? Huh. That is 100% hitting something there. Holy shit. It could be a small rotation. Yeah, I think there is a slight small rotation. It, like, comes out. I mean, that's pretty fucking good. I mean, there's games that, that they have fuck-ups like this, and it's all on the same server. I'm going to get it one of these times when he actually says the word. I think that's the boundary. <laughs> I th so I think that's the missile going from that is insane going from one server to another. All right, so if I go backwards, this. Shit All right, I'm gonna like jump to the end because I want to see. What, you know, let's let's listen to what he's saying to his chat about this. I think, um, as this keeps happening, this will happen a lot over the next year, especially because Star Citizen is about to become presentable. All of these videos we've seen, like, think about how insane how much a Jack Frags or a Bed Bananas video is going to pop off when the actual visuals of Star Citizen... Um, no, I know, it doesn't bleep over his. The actual visuals of Star Citizen start to make it look like a finished game in these videos they're making. Like, when they, when they shoot, show these gameplay videos, a lot of times it still looks pretty janky. But imagine with, like, the new FPS stuff, with the map, with server meshing actually working, with 4.0 maybe coming out this year... Those things are going to draw a lot more people to this game that weren't interested in it before. And they might not want to play it, um, but he definitely, it would definitely be, uh, it gets more eyes and more discussion. And so I'm interested in hearing what people are saying to each other when they see this stuff finally being put into the game. For example, they're moving so objects that, across. I can also interact with entities that are on the other You side. see that? So if I go on the screen zone, for example, and I should They're all synced to a centralized server? Control. Yeah. And like, that's basically what's happening, right? So I guess this would be the central server, and this is the version of it that they're seeing, the users are seeing, but the central server is totally different. So like, you're not even seeing the real server. It's like a mirror. Yeah, exactly. You could say it could be game changing. I think this is insane. Like, I've said this before, right? Is that I don't like the idea of servers, and I think servers are a technological limitation. Down with servers. Taxes and servers. No more. <laughs> and I'm so fucking glad that there's a legitimate developer Got that somehow managed to get $700 million that agrees with me. This is great. I'm very happy about this. This is amazing. The server's incredibly different and novel tech. Yeah, difficult. This means no server crash. If yours go down, you automatically get transferred to another identical one. I'm sure there's going to be like replacement servers and things like that that happen. But yes, basically, it's cool tech, but there's no way that a company can pay the server side. Sadly, at least not now. It's too asynchronous. I love that. Like first, it's the game. <laughs> they've gotten too much money for this game and then it's, well, they can't pay for this. How would they, how would they ever do it? You, you are you saying like pay as in terms of like exp like expense? You're saying it's too expensive? You have to understand that, like, my understanding of programming is that I can read HTML and I can read some C++. I've taken one class in programming that I got a C in, and Ooh, I also... I, I, I did better in my programming class, but I can honestly say I don't know anything about game development besides what I've learned covering all this. That being said, CID is not bad at teaching some game development stuff, at least theories, not, not like, you know, coding. I couldn't sit down and tell you how to make a pyramid out of threes but uh <laughs> maybe they could do that slash n for the new line type threes for three one to three x equals one x add a three i don't know something like that coding right 
took a couple of advanced classes in like a, uh, like a flow chart management that used uh, coding with it. So I don't really know a lot about coding. But what I do know is that things that always look better are not always more expensive on any sort of like load. And I think the best example of that is I think it was Unreal 5.2 or 5.3, where they took a wind replication and they could seamlessly add wind is that replication from any direction to a seemingly infinite number of trees. And not only was it affecting every single tree, but it was also doing it at a rate that was so much cheaper for the entire load of the PC. So I think what's going to end up happening is that it's the same with anything, right? I mean, like, how are we going to say that this is impossible whenever we, a lot of us, grew up playing GameCube and Super that's... Nintendo and Nintendo 64? Or... Yeah, I feel like that's part of, like, that's, that's a big part of why people have always been so into Star Citizen. Because a lot of us, <laughs> a lot of us kind of think that it might not work out, right? That it's not going to go well, but um, it's still the idea of what's, what they're going for. What what the goal is, what the whole design behind the game is. And that's changing here and there in small ways, but the overall idea of having a really big space game with good interactions, good graphics, a lot of choices, and the ability to kind of function in a first-person environment, that's always been something people really want, and that's why it's survived this whole time. Cool that people are starting to, to see that and, and get that from outside the community. Dude's not wrong that it would be expensive if it stayed static. Yeah, and the dynamic server meshing will be a good help for that. I see Kwaku in chat. Your Mission Maker episode showed how to make a mission. We went over your Mission Maker episode today. You know I've got that, I've got that, uh, the Elliot footage. Apollo. Subsumption. One of our favorites. Good to see you, dude. Thanks for popping in chat. How are you? They just talk like they are teaching to justify. I mean, I don't care what the teaching is per se. I'm saying that as somebody who learns by watching people talk, I get a lot more from their videos than I do from, say, Cyberpunk 2077 videos. I'm not saying they're running a college course. I'm just saying that I get a lot from the amount of content they put out. Do not watch any reaction YouTubers, especially the big ones who sell reactions. Hey, I'm going to... I'm going to, I got nothing. <laughs> I'm going to react to something. I don't know. I react to stuff all the time. I'm a, I'm a reactor, but not the new nuclear kind. Kwaku talked smack about you and ISC. We need to jump in Manchester. More like jump him with a hug. Big ups to Kwaku for the mission work. I'm so freaking excited to see what they do with the investigation missions. Mm. I'm pumped for that. But I do hope that. I do hope it comes soon. Or that we hear hear more soon, at least. Truth isn't negative. Okay. Is that a doctrine? Is that like a... One of the things you say when you meet your club members? Truth isn't negative, my, my brother. You happy to see that CIG has been able to cross this hurdle and move past it? Still work to do, but good... It's a bit of a shame there are some content creators who seem unable to move with CIG at this point, but I'm happy to see you're not one of those. Hey man, there's a lot of different opinions and stuff to have about where the game is going. I think everybody's got something reasonable to say somewhere. And um, CIG is making some big changes and some big statements with their choices. So I completely understand when people don't uh, don't like that stuff, you know? Fail to see how it'd be more expensive splitting a thousand people among 10 servers or splitting a thousand people among 10 servers on one shard. I think they're just saying it would be expensive be for the sake of servers. Oh, I see what you mean. Because all those people would still require all those servers. I don't know. Maybe because they all have to be in close geographic proximity to work correctly. need to see someone outside of the community reacting to what's going on in an informed way it's nice to, to see the comments too did i keep the page up no the comments are wild people are very excited i hope i hope it 
ends up being what they think it is. <laughs> it's not like a disappointment. Um, so I'm also excited. It's fun to be excited together, you know? So many people were jealous their backed project didn't get nearly as much money as CAG got. It's kind of crazy how much money this project got. Feelings need to be checked. There's another one. Is that the response? Truth is not negative, my brother. Mmm, brother, feelings need to be checked. <laughs> all right, everybody. Uh, thank you all for joining me today for this little monthly report get together. You know we love a good Monday chat. Everybody's, uh, we're happy on Mondays. We're actually pretty delinquent on Mondays. We're like, really, we're, we're out of it. But delinquent was not the right word there. Delirious? Degenerate? I don't know. Uh, we're not all of our, all of our marbles aren't in the, in the cup on Mondays. We need a little wake up. So I like to do a chatting stream to get us started for the week and then get to some gameplay <laughs> later <laughs> on, <laughs> on Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. So... Keep an eye out for other streams this week. We'll be jumping back into the 323 PTU, testing a lot of the features that we just talked about here on this monthly report. And also, a new video is coming out tomorrow, my friends. It is about... Hold on, I wonder if it shows up here. It is uh, not here yet. But it is about cargo hauling and the new changes coming to the cargo hauling missions. Um, trading versus cargo hauling versus how does it work with freight elevators and all of the new factions and the intergalactic trade association, I think it's called. So keep an eye out for that tomorrow. If you are a member subscriber on Twitch or, you know, however you might support us, don't forget you have a playlist of exclusive videos here that you can check out that go a little bit deeper into the development of Star Citizen, how it relates to other games like Baldur's Gate 3. I know, weird take, but... I, I think it's a decent video. Um, and then, yeah, we'll be streaming later this week. If you haven't seen the new podcast, we just released one with Beyond the Verse talking about 323 too. So, you know, if this wasn't enough talking for you, can't say... Uh, <laughs> I feel like it, it probably was, but maybe you want some more tomorrow. Thank you all for sticking around and hanging out. I hope you enjoyed. Let's, uh, let's see. Who's this? Sorry, I'm perusing a little bit. Hi up, Tom. Don't forget to join the giveaway, folks. We still got one ongoing started during the streamathon, and uh, you still have a chance to get in it. I believe it's a Drake Cutter. Yeah, starter pack giveaway. Make sure to check that out if you want a chance to get into the game or get a new ship in the game. And I will see you all in the next one on Wednesday, folks. Have a good one. Appreciate you all. Much love, the Tomato Gang. Love you guys, Garden. And um, go eat some good food. Say hi to somebody. Have a good time. I'll catch y'all later. Bye!